the usual speech of Governor, Governor Lamont here. Awesome photo, Doug. Thank you. I have a little less hair and he's a little more gray. <laughs> All right, this meeting is being recorded per Governor Lamont's Executive Order 7B. Good evening and welcome to the March 9th, 2021 meeting of the Weathersfield Historic District Commission. For those of you who have not been, been here before, tonight's session is composed of two parts, a public hearing and a public meeting. In the public hearing, we ask each applicant in turn to come forward and explain their application in detail. This will give an opportunity to clarify what you are proposing to do and for you to ask any questions of us. Also, commissioners may voice an opinion or suggestion based on their own feelings. However, a vote is not taken until the public meeting following the public hearing. In the public meeting, which is not open to the public, for comment, we will deliberate your application and decide how to act on it. We may approve it, approve it with stipulations, table it for further consideration, or in rare cases, we may deny it. You, may, you, you are welcome to stay for the public meeting, but need not do so. The results of tonight's meeting will be available from the Weathersfield Building Office tomorrow at 860-721-2839 anytime after 9 a.m. Please be advised that the Historic District Commission approval does not pr preclude the need for any other required permits, such as zoning, in the wetlands, or building. Please contact the building department to review any other permits that may be required before beginning your construction. With this, I will ask our clerk, Commissioner Lyons, to read the legal notice. Thank you. Legal Notice Town of Weathersfield Historic District Commission. The Weathersfield Historic District Commission will hold a virtual public hearing on Tuesday, March 9th, 2021 at 7.30 p.m. on the following applications seeking a certificate of appropriateness. Application 6006-21, Charles and Sylvia Sylvester seeking to install new main roof and alter gutters to remove Yankee gutters and replace with new aluminum style at 44 Church Street. Application 6007-21, Frank J. Satano, seeking to install railings on rear entry at 32 Church Street. Application 6008-21, Micah Kerr, seeking to reconstruct front entry to allow for proper code requirements at 245 Main Street. Application 6009-21, Doug and Ashley Elliott, seeking to install matte black metal standing seam roof on front porch and over two windows on house at 30 Broad Street. If you wish to review the applications on file, you may request a copy by contacting HDC comments at weathersfieldct.gov or by calling 860-721-2836. Live participation is available by audio format. Any resident interested in speaking on an application or wishing to listen to the meeting should email HDC comments at weathersfieldct.gov or call 860 721-2836 by 6 p.m. and the night of the meeting to be sent a phone number for audio access. Please include your name, phone number, and address in the email. Town of Weathersfield, Connecticut, Historic District Commission, Kim Wolf, duly authorized, dated at Weathersfield, Connecticut, this 22nd day, uh, no, uh, this uh, ninth day of March, 2021. You're killing Thank me, you. Kim. No. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Lyons. Oh, no, that is right, dated. Uh, I'm sorry about that. All right, proceed. All right, thank you. All right, we'll start with application 6004-21, Tesla Energy Operations seeking to install 32 roof-mounted solar panels. Do we have anyone? Yes. Do you guys hear me from yeah. Tesla, Lindita? Okay, um, you have the plans. Do you want me to share the screen? I can do that. Is there, uh, is there something new? Yeah, that's ranching. All right, please share. Okay, um, do you see my screen? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet, not yet. All right, hold on. It says I'm disabled for screen sharing. I guess I need access. Let me see if I can, let me see if I can unfreeze it. Hold on one second. Thank you. Oh. 
a lot of us have disabilities. You guys do have it in your up in your packet. It that was sent out today. The trenching photos are right the second page, the page right after the application. So it is updated on the website and on your emails. It's the one with the blue line. Yes. Okay. Yes. The one with the pictures too. I'm, I mean, I just wanted to show how is like, I know there's some blue lines and green lines. However, the blue one, the blue lines are the ones that are not going to be shown. Of course, they're going to be in ground. You're the all only. Set. You're all set now. Oh, okay. Thank you. And okay, sure. All right. So, um, like I was referring to, the so the blue lines are the ones that are gonna where the trench is gonna go in ground and then this green light is the only one that we're gonna paint it um, that's gonna connect to the array to the PV. Over here means that this one is inside uh, connected to the main panel and that one it's because this yellow line over here it's gonna be inside not outside. There's going to be in ground, so the only visible is going to be the one in here, which is like this green line. And actually, it says the convict run and everything, so. which is not going to be really seen because we're going to paint it. Like you paint white. that white. <laughs> white, yes, <laughs> which is not going to be seen. It's going to be painted white, and then um, yeah, we try to do it that way so it's like not visible from the other street and then from the other parts, mostly just for the neighbor. But yeah. Okay, great. Yep. Pretty clear. Mm -hmm. So it's not going through the roof line. It's going to come over the edge. And yes. Then come underneath the overhang and and then. Right. Correct. Yes. Yes. Wall. Uh huh. Yep. That's it. Any other questions from the commissioners? Thank you very much. Thank you for going back and putting this together. Of course. Um, finally, I mean, I got to work with a designer to just show it the way you guys want it and like make it more visible and just to explain it in detail and stuff. So, uh, but we got it, we got there. So, um, it's great. Anyway. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for your efforts on that. Sure. Any other commissioners? All right. Hearing none. Any from anyone from the public wishing to speak for or against? Okay, hearing none. Can we uh, stop sharing on this? Sorry. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. Next up, application number my six. Hand was up. I'm sorry. I didn't see that. That's quite all right. I'll lower it now. <laughs> um, I'm Jennifer Regan Lefebvre. This is my husband, Thomas Regan Lefebvre. We're the homeowners. Um, we want to thank you all for entertaining this proposal. Um, it has been a frustrating experience, I think, for all of us at some points. Uh, this is the third proposal that we have submitted to you. Um, we made significant changes each time. The first time we changed the position, the location, and the size of the panels, reducing them and putting them only on the side that's the back of the house um, that can be just seen from Garden Street, removing them from the Smithy Lane side. And then um, per your request with the third application, I mean, they're the same application, but it's been amended significantly each time. Um, we've added the 52 foot trench around our house to hide uh, the conduit. Um, the remaining little bit is only going to be about four feet long and is, as Lindita said, painted to match. So I really hope you will now approve this utility on what is a 21st century structure um, and extension of our 19th century house. And I hope if you've had any other concerns that you can raise them now so perhaps we can, can respond to them because I understand we won't be able to respond later in the um, public meeting. Okay. I don't think we have any other concerns. Does anybody, any commissioners? No. No. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, moving along to application number 6005-21, John and Patricia Ferentino. Sorry about that, I had to get off the mute. Good evening. Um, uh, we took all the feedback that we received from the, the last meeting, and I believe we've, we've now addressed them. The, the first item 
that had come up had to do with the type of materials that was being used on the uh, columns on the, the new front porch. Uh, we have changed that material to, to permacast and that's been um, reflected in the drawings on uh, page A5. I'm not sure what series you have, but it's uh, drawing number A5 that were submitted, uh, I think back on the 24th, the day after the, the last meeting. Mm -hmm. We also had dropped off, the, the second item had to do with the windows. Um, they wanted to see, the group wanted to see what the tribute material looked like exterior. So we were able to get a, a cutout of the uh, vinyl type exterior. It's not the exact construction as the tribute, but the material is the exact same material that would be on, on the outside. And we also provided a uh, color chart sample. Uh, there was some question and concern whether or not the uh, color that would go on there would be too shiny. And it is a black matte finish and it's the same finish color that's used on the Majesty window. The third item um, that got quite a bit of discussion had to do with the rake and return on the front of the house, in particular over the three windows in the front, as well as the garage. What we've done is we took that feedback and we've um, eliminated the returns and we've reduced the projection out of the rake uh, from 12 inches down to six inches. And that's been updated on drawings A3. And there's a more detailed uh, blowout of that on drawing A4. And those were the items that we had from, that had come up from the last meeting that we had. And we welcome any comments or questions. Did everybody get a chance to get over and see the samples? Did everybody, anybody have any other additional questions they'd like to ask? Quiet group tonight. Yeah, sure is. <laughs> All right. Actually, uh, I'm uh, willing to be heard. Uh, yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to thank the um, applicants for providing the documentary evidence that was so helpful uh, for everyone to see. Um, I know that I think that there will be a discussion during the meeting itself um, about the, uh, or I should say during the public meeting when we normally wouldn't have public comment, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Farentino, about the, um, the particular Harvey window that you're planning to use. Um, I know that one of the things that we noticed about the particular window that you're using is that it has a bevel on it and in its uh, that bevel is what holds the screen and um, unfortunately that bevel kind of uh, replicates the look of uh, aluminum storm window um, because of the way it's formed um, in some um, retrofit uh, installations we haven't uh, tended to find that as preferable uh, an outcome as the um, construction of the Harvey Majesty, which is a flat uh, face to the street. Um, now, this is a little different because uh, the window is in black and it won't show as much as it might in white, I'm thinking. Don't know for sure, but that's uh, I'll, I'll grant that that's a possibility. Um, also, since this is going to be a new construction window, some of the downsides that we have seen in this type of window installation might not be as evident. Um, on the other hand, there aren't going to be any shutters. Um, this is going to be a relatively exposed window. And so if um, it, it really kind of will have to um, succeed on its own. Um, so I think there will be some discussion about whether this particular Harvey window is the best choice for this uh, project. Uh, but as I said, I think there are some things going for it. Uh, and then there are some things that uh, there might be some reservations on it. Um, I found that the sheen of the uh, sample that you provided 
seemed uh, flat enough. Uh, so that was, uh, or matte enough, uh, not exactly flat, but matte. And I think that's a positive. I also think that because the home is going to be wrapped new, uh, there's a certain um, consistency in how the whole house is going to look window wise and siding wise with new materials. And that will be a little bit different than when you have a usual installation with just windows on a house that might have siding on it that's 25 or 50 years old. Um, so I do think all that merits towards serious consideration of what you gave us. Uh, I really appreciated the modifications that were made to the trim. I think it looks much more consistent with what's there on, uh, Oldham, on, on the house now and on Oldham Road generally. Um, so I think that uh, you are, uh, have made substantial steps towards a, a, a successful project. And I really appreciated the effort that you undertook in providing us with the samples. Thank you. Thank you for the feedback. Sure. Thank you, Doug. You Any other questions? Or... No one? No. Can, okay. Can we make some final comments, if you don't mind? Please. OK. Uh, like I say, we, we appreciate the, the feedback. And um, we think we've um, met the, the requests and, and, and concerns. And uh, we hope this can be approved because we really need to uh, move forward on this as we have our existing house that we need to um, put onto the marketplace so we can get things rolling here. So um, if this can get approved tonight, we would very much appreciate that. If there's any other questions, we, because I know we can't speak during the um, session that you folks go through your discussion. If there's anything else, we'd love to hear it now so we can try and address it. Any other commissioner comments? I think we've got pretty well wrapped up there okay. as far as information. Uh, any other public comments? I don't see any hands up. Uh, all right, we'll move on to the next application. Thank you. Thank you very much. Application number 6006-21, Charles and Sylvia Sylvester, 44 Church Street. Hi. Hi. Hey there, welcome. So we're looking at putting on a new roof and uh, removing the Yankee gutter. Updating our gutter system. Um, I came in and spoke to you guys a couple of times and you, I appreciate the recommendations that you made to look into um, different options for the rotted wood that was there on, as part of the Yankee gutter, Yankee gutter. Um, so we spoke to uh, remodelers, construction, um, home improvement. And when we spoke to um, J.P. Carroll, um, we found this <clears throat> the most respectful way to move forward um, with um, updating the gutter system. Um, I don't know if Larry, I think Larry is, maybe he's here, I don't know. I think he is. Larry, can you unmute yourself? Kim, can you help him? Okay, there we go. How's that? No, that that work. Yeah, welcome. Oh, oh, welcome. I, I'm just here. I, I didn't know exactly what what uh, you need from me as far as uh, yeah, yeah, questions or concerns or or what or just uh, just just here re reinforcement for the for Mr. And Mrs. Sylvester. So I suppose I have a question. Yeah. Sure. Um, your drawing suggests that you're going to be reducing the length of the roof deck yes 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 sorry about that i drew that <laughs> yeah and so you've got these very prominent overhangs of the house what are we losing well if you can see i don't know if kim uh if you, she can show this but at number 52 church street there's one modification that was made at um at their house where Ident has identical similar, house. Right, and it's identical. We found a couple identical houses to, to our roof line, 
and we saw different things that how they handled um, the Yankee gutter. What they did was they enclosed it completely and you can't see the boards at all. They cut them off and then they enclosed the whole system and put on soffits. Yeah, soffits. Um, further down on Church Street at number uh, 425, there's a Hubbard that what they did was they just cut off the board and then it just, I guess, drips. There's no gutter or anything. Yeah, see, that's the house on the right there is. Thanks, Kim. Um, that see how he's, they've enclosed the whole. Oh, no, I guess it is open on the bottom. No, it's not, it, that's a mistake. No, hey, there's vinyl soffit there. Yeah, vinyl okay. soffit, yeah. So you see how the pitch of the roof is? Yankee gutters, I really think it was a bad design because it, you, you, all the Hubbards that I've seen with Yankee gutters, and I'm not talking about a Victorian over on Broad Street, or I'm talking about the Hubbards, they've been updated. And I think that it's part, partly because there aren't a lot of houses with that design and it wasn't, wasn't, a, yeah. it wasn't a good design. That's, the wood is rotted, the snow doesn't come off, the snow sits in the huge decking spot and rots the wood. And it's not really any, updating it would be the best way to preserve the house. And the speak, people that I spoke to, there were different options given to us, but looking at the houses in the area, look at the Hubbards particularly, they've, they've, they've had to make improvements. And so we have the board still seen, except there's a gutter at the end and we could have no gutter. And you could see that on 425 Church Street. So I, I looked at the, on Google Maps quickly at 425 and I looked at the other one closer to you. Yeah. The, the one closer to you is, I would say, not the most satisfactory solution to the problem. That's what we thought. Yeah. Uh, and I would probably use stronger words if I was in private. Uh, the the four twenty five is is better. Uh, the one thing your pro your proposal includes seamless gutters, and if I'm not mistaken, seamless gutters almost exclusively are a K style gutter. That's Larry. Larry. Yes. yes. Or the, or uh, you could do a half round gutter if you want more, you know, period style. You yeah. Know, there's either or. I mean, if we're going to preserve anything on this house, uh, a half round would certainly work better mm -hmm. aesthetically. Mm -hmm. Because when this house was built, uh, a steeply pitched roof may have had wooden gutters that looked like K styles, but this mm -hmm. roof never would have. Yeah. Right. Correct. Where, where, mm -hmm. where the K style is part of emulating a large crown molding. And this house mm -hmm. obviously can't have a large crown molding with those huge overhangs. Right. right. Yeah. Well, look, may, I may I add something to this? Please. Hello? Oh, yeah. okay. All right. Well, the, I, I was brought in. They asked me to uh, to replace their roof, mm -hmm. and uh, we noticed that some of the framing members are rotted on the ends. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure. Some of these are decorative. Some of these are actual structural. Um, so now it came, and then also some of the decking on the end has been is rotted too because of this inboard Yankee gutter system that they have. Mm -hmm. So so the result was to cut, to cut back approximately a couple of feet to, uh, to remove some of the rotted um, framing members on the ends and the decking and to preserve the actual roof. That's, that's otherwise um, some of these framing members uh, would have to be replaced and a lot of the decking in that area would have to be replaced and trying to replace and try to actually match the existing beadboard that they have there now. So that, that, was, the, that was the big issue. So the idea is to chop everything off as much as possible and just leave and put up a gutter, right? Well, uh, well, we, well, it's a three foot overhang. So we were, we were discussing, you know, the amount obviously, you know, can be determined. We were talking about maybe possibly two feet because there again, from, from, from the, uh, from the ground, you could see there's uh, some of the deck boards yeah. uh, are, are rotted. And I assume you're going to be replacing rotted wood anyway, right? Right, but these are exposed, so you would have to, we have to match existing beadboard uh, in the exposed area. So that's what we were trying to avoid. 
So I, I have to say, um, I had actually noticed 52 because it's just two houses down and that's a really sad house. It's a sad looking house. Um, your house is really beautiful and it has mm -hmm. the full character of the Hubbard houses that we so love and preserve. It was a unique period in Weathersfield's history. Um, what I'm hearing your contractor say, just to make sure I'm, I'm hearing it correctly, that it is possible to replace the rotted wood, to match the beadboard, to structurally make it sound. It's just easier to cut back two thirds of the overhang and put gutters on. So let me just make sure I'm correct in understanding that replacing is an option, it's just more complicated, more difficult. Well, it, it's, it's the actual framing members, the ends of the framing members that are mm -hmm. rotted well. Okay, yep. it's not just the decking, it's the framing members. Not sure how far they go into the deck, if they're actually structural. Um, you know, if they are, then now you're talking, you know, now you have to remove the whole roof pretty much to replace those. But you would have to do that either way. If you cut it back two feet and found that it was still rotten, you'd still have to go back and replace that, right? Well, I, I don't know what the inside of the attic looks like. Um, we'd have to look at that. I'm just talking about the the exposed. Okay, thank you. I would I would like to uh, just comment as well that it's a really distinctive roof. Uh, at the same time, I think that if we're going, and I agree with Vasek's suggestion for half rounds, and I'm glad the uh, uh, contractor can supply them. I I think that the case style gutters would just be completely incon incongruous with this house. Um, mm -hmm. But I would say that um, I'm hopeful that maybe if you just took like six inches off the uh, current tails that you would, because it would, it would look silly to take what you have right now and add a, a half round to it because I think it would extend a little bit even more. It would be so I think you might be able to get away with cutting it back just a little bit because you're adding the uh, half round. Um, I, but I think to take a substantial amount of it really uh, takes away the distinctiveness of, of this roof, which I realize is a, is a maintenance issue uh, or a reconstruction issue. But I'm hopeful that, I, I mean, you, it, some of these are probably not rotted all the way back. Uh, in fact, most of them might not be. And the ones that are could be repaired. Um, so I, I would have to say, I would agree with uh, allowing some of this to be trimmed so you don't have to rebuild all of them. Um, but until you get into the work, it would be hard to um, embrace the idea of letting them all go. So you're so that's you're talking about doing that without the gutters added. No, I I'm saying that I think you should add the gutters. That I think that I could go with a trim, uh, but certainly not more than half of what's there. And uh, ultimately, I'd like to see two thirds of what's there remain, with the addition of the uh, Yankee gutter maybe getting you. Um, getting you there so I, you said it's a three foot overhang right now um pretty close yeah um if it's a full three feet i would you know like to see it stay at two and a half um but i don't want to see it to go to one and a half or less uh if that can be avoided especially because the point of using the half rounds is that they're lower profile and so that still will preserve the view, especially from the ground of this uh, detail, which is not only part of your upper roof, but of the lower ones as well, and really uh, is so worthy of, of, of being re retained. Now, the lower roofs, the, the overhang is a little less anyway, isn't that right? Correct. Right. So well, as would be of... appropriate for a much smaller structure, Doug. It's a, yes. it's a porch and not an entire roof. Oh, I'm I sorry, agree. I can't see your name. What's your name? The, the woman who's talking? I can't see her name. It doesn't oh, show sure. That's Ms. Me. 
Miss what? Commissioner Mead. Okay, thanks. What, what I wanted to say was that I agree with you, Claire, about that. Um, I think the, what I was going to say is that gives you an idea of just how much you would be losing on the top roof if you went back that far. Uh, I think that part of the reason why the lower roofs work being a little bit minimal is because they're smaller roofs to begin with, but you get the idea of how they are influenced by what's on top. So um, I think that there's a way around all this. I mean, down below, I'd rather see those. Are you planning on hanging um, half rounds or gutters on the lower roofs as well? I don't think so. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> At least then it can be, you know, authentic. And I appreciate that. That's what I love about the house. I just feel like it wasn't, it wasn't well designed. I mean, Hubbard has Understand. several, I mean, beautiful houses, but there are a few with this roof line and with this Yankee gutter. And a Yankee gutter is a very broad type name tagged onto all kinds of, oh, let's put a deck and put a board at the end and they call it a Yankee gutter. It doesn't, well, it's not an effective well, we, way of getting water off your roof. We, wow. we, haven't, gotten, we haven't gotten to the uh, public meeting yet and whether or not that's going to be the, the center of this discussion or the proposal for how to deal with it. So we'll see. I, I think that there's clearly uh, a willingness to consider the inferiority of, of the current setup. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. And I just wanted to, I know that over the years, the Sylvester's have been here a number of different times. They've almost always come. People. They've almost always come in advance to try to get a feel for where to go. Um, so I, that's certainly appreciated. Uh, at the same time, um, I think there's um, maybe a middle ground here uh, that may not be at the 50-yard line exactly, but uh, that will uh, be something that can be considered during the public meeting. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right, any other commissioners wishing to speak? Hearing none, any of the public wishing to speak in favor or against this application? Uh, I don't, no. I don't think so. Okay. Okay. All right, moving on. Application number 6007-21, Frank Centino. Hello. Hey, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good to see you. Thank you, likewise. All right, so we are looking at an application, uh, let's see, revised your entry. And we're looking at uh, installing railings, rear entry. Uh, so we've got the material called out. Unfortunately, there's no drawing of the where the railing is going and around what it's going. Can Mr. Centino maybe help us? It's a, the railing is already there. So I, I that that's that's the one boob I made when I built the house. Uh, and Kim said that we need to go before the board. So initially, okay. when I when I when I drew the house, I didn't draw a railing in. It was an error because of the elevation. We need a railing. Uh, All right. It is a Trex oh. composite deck. Uh, How big? Home, and it is eight feet by. 39 inches. So eight feet wide, 39 inches, two steps, three risers. Okay. And we're talking a railing all the way around the thing? Three sides. I'm sorry, I'm sorry I, I apologize. Two sides because this butts up against the house. So the steps are, the, you would walk along the house, steps are along the house. So you walk up, and then you take a right-hand turn to go into the door. So two sides for the railings. Okay. Side and the rear. And no railing going up the steps? Uh, there's a railing going up the step, yes. Okay. I should have sent a picture, I apologize. That's okay, I would just, you know, I, look, I looked at a couple of things and I wasn't quite sure what I was looking at, so I figured this would be a good place to ask. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Um, all right. All right. Any other commissioners? No, I'm done. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just one quick question. Un unfortunately, yeah. when this material, when we talk about a man, they, you know, it's the sheen that always comes down to. And Frank, do you know, is this a, a gloss, a, a matte uh, finish? I'm going to say it's a satin finish. It's comparable to Trex, Azak, all the others. There's one on Center Street. It's comparable to Center. There's one on, is it Willow Street? The house that was just done. Did a nice job on it, by the way. Uh, the Commission Motor Vehicles Daughters live there. I don't know the house number, but they have the same product in the front of their house. 22 uh, Willard. The Willard property or the, uh, yes. yeah. Correct. Not the Hartford Ave. Uh, yeah, the, the Willard property has it on the side, on yeah. the driveway. 22 Willard has it on the front. On the front too, okay, yeah. Mark, it's the one that you saw. Gotcha. Yeah, and that's the product we weren't too happy with, or as it turned out, is that yeah, accurate? Would... I would say, Frank, that's one of the issues. Um, the that that material was uh, advertised as being Azek, and we thought that meant it would be matte white, and okay. unfortunately, it didn't really come out matte white. Well, getting it, if getting rid of iPod, getting rid of the sheen is very easy to do. Wipe it down with acetone, the sheen is gone, and it becomes flat. So that's that's doable if that's a concern. That's really easy to do. Interesting. Thank you. Frank, do you mind if I butt in for one second? Yes, go um, right. Is this Kim? It is. Hi, Frank. How are you? Um, Frank also has an approval to put a six foot fence around his daughter's property. Which will happen hopefully within the next three weeks. So the, the visibility might be more minimal at that point. <laughs> okay. Good point. It's a good stat. So I think one of the problems we have with that material, Frank, is it's 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 a hollow material, and yes. yeah, so it's just doesn't represent when when people say initially said ASIC, it was it was solid boards. No, no, uh, well, the, the yes, originally well, ASAC, ASAC makes it. You make the ASAC trim, but then you have the multiple joints which fail over time. So this is one piece. Yes, I. This is not wood. I agree with you. I'm not going to pass this off as wood. No, it's not wood. <laughs> We're in agreement. Yes, we are. All right. Anybody else? All right. Any public comment in favor or against? Hearing none, we will move on to the next application. Thank you very much. Stay safe. Enjoy the rest of your evening. You too. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye bye. Application number 6008-21, Micah Kerr, I know I've seen your name out there. You must be with us. I'm here. I keep unmuting because I'm not looking at the agenda, so I had no idea. So every time I'm like, oh, I'm excited. <laughs> um, all right. I, I think uh, I have a deck, so I'm going to share my screen, all right? Sure. Um, I got two here because I got one for comment later but so hopefully I get the right one all right cool so you guys see that okay yes yeah. oh let me actually I think I'm just going to cut to that right yeah so there's nothing new in the prior uh thing this is what we're looking at today excuse me sorry this is what we're looking at today with the front of the building and obviously uh with the uh, ADA laws I need to make this handicap accessible as we talked about uh whenever that was two weeks ago i guess yeah um so from what i had shown you and you seem to all i don't believe i heard any issues really um but the the only thing i've done since then was i have instead of the hand rigged version that i shared with you i have a more of a, a formal plan now so when we went back and and i knew that i was in the right ballpark I went out and did some more precise measurements and found the minimum changes I needed to make, um, which was pretty easy. The end result with this is it ends up being, a, I think it's 18, actually I have to zoom in, but it's on there. You can see it's like 18 feet, six inches instead of, I believe I told you guys 20 feet. Uh, we made it just a little bit smaller so that it lines up better with the architectural features of the building. I'm just gonna, uh, um, can you see my cursor? Yes. Okay, 
So as you can see, like in the building and the architecture, there's these kind of panels that are built there. And this is lacking a little bit of the detail, but you can see better here, right? You've got essentially they're framing these things. The lineup that they had was actually not in line with anything. It was kind of confusing when we started to figure out how it related, but you know, when we made it 20 feet, it definitely wasn't relating to the existing structure. So we, we gave up about a foot and a half, which means part of the um, wheelchair lift won't be covered by the roof uh, completely, but um, it's, that's for architectural purposes, it lines up much better with the actual design of the building. It doesn't crowd the windows, which I think the design I showed you last time crowded the windows a little bit. And um, obviously this is the original, the current. So when you look here, it's not crowding the windows and it, it was definitely pretty close to doing that before. Um, if you see the trim detail, which I'm gonna try to zoom in and hopefully that'll work for you guys. I don't, it's working. Yes, losing a little bit of uh, So the, the detail that we're showing, it's we've kept all the elements there, but what we've changed is that the, um, the roof that's there has had some additions to it over time. We can tell that. Um, so there's a lot of like weirdness, if you will, to the structure of it. But we wanted to do essentially the same design, which we have here, but with um, making it so that it's accommodating the seven inch raise in the stoop. The concrete stoop, if, if you recall, has to come up about seven inches in order to make the stoop the same level as the interior floor and therefore wheelchair accessible. So we're um, shorten, shortening everything. So instead of a foot at the bottom there, I think we went to nine inches. And so, you know, that kind of like slight compression and you can see it's a bit more of an elegant roof in our design. Um, and let me see if I can scroll over to, yeah. Oh yeah, this is gonna be fun on Zoom. Right. So as you can see, it's still, it's very much what was there, but it now lines up with all the lines of the building, right? It isn't um, flowing over this, um, you know, uh, architectural break. The, there's a section here where all the bricks are up on their end, uh, creating a line across the building. And so now it's better in line with the actual um, roof and we're able to use the same flashing that's there today. So we're really literally not changing the height of the roof. We're just adjusting everything to fit in there better. So, and I think the only other thing that I've showing here that I didn't have directly shown on the prior drawing was that over here on the right, you'll see that we're gonna have to pour um, some more sidewalk. And I think I might've let you know, but it will have a slight ramp up to, um, to make it so it's a perfect for the ramp, the, the lift. The lift has like a, you know, they're all designed to go a certain distance. And this is, um, we, we're gonna have to pour the slab for the lift at the right elevation so it works, you know, within a half an inch or whatever. And then fine tune the lift. Um, I also, uh, whoops, gotta zoom back out. Uh, so this is the actual lift. I have, uh, I think I included all the specs, uh, to you guys, right? On the, yes. on the file yeah. I sent to you. Um, and what this does, sorry, my dogs are barking. I think my wife's home. Um, yeah, so that's it. I'm gonna, I don't know how much this barking is gonna bother you. So I think I need to probably end what I'm doing. Any questions from the commissioners? Yeah. Yes, uh, Mike. A quick: Are you going to put any kind of finish coating over the concrete, the patching, or can you describe that a little bit? Currently, the entire foundation of the building is simply poured concrete. Um, in order to match the building, I am going to pour concrete. Um, you know, in, in future, or if there's a recommendation, I certainly can can do something about it. But this building has had you know exposed pour, poured concrete for 99 years, and I. I'm looking to, I'm building everything back with metal, wood, and concrete just as it exists today. Yeah, just asking you what your plans were. And now in this proposal though, and you're not proposing a sign here tonight, right? No, no, that was, we, that's, yeah, that's right. Some of this is uh, because we were kind of thinking, what do we want to do for a sign? Um, I also, as a, as a, a side, again, not related to this, is that 
I've contacted my friend who was the president of the Farmington Lodge of the Masons and said, asked him to look over the property if there's anything they want or what have you, because I'm, I know it's a fraternal order and maybe they want their logo off the front or what have you. So my goal is to keep those things there. But if, if the Masons want them back, it's, you know, who am I? So, okay, uh, thank you. But yeah, that's the other little detail. But yeah, concrete's the plan. Great. Any other commissioners? Nope. All right, I have yes. a letter. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, Sorry, Doug. Yeah, I, uh, this is a really exciting uh, proposal. Um, I think that uh, concrete sidewalks are perfectly appropriate. And uh, so I completely in favor of that. Uh, I would um, really appreciate it if any detail that's on the building right now that relates to the Masons stay there uh, because I do think that it has uh, a real distinctiveness, uh, adds a real distinctiveness to the building. I do appreciate the idea of supporting the fraternal uh, order um, and, and being respectful to that, but you're being so respectful to one of the uh, what will be one of the best preserved uh, Masonic temples in Connecticut uh, that I think you're worthy of um, that guild uh, mark remaining there. Um, well, yeah. <laughs> totally, totally get it. I, I just, um, my grandfather was a Mason for 50 plus years. Um, like I said, I have a few dear friends who are very involved in the order. And uh, because it's an alcohol driven business, and I feel it's appropriate to offer them the ability to take it back. But if, if they do approach me, I will then obviously have to come back to you guys because that would be an aesthetic change to the building and that would seek appropriateness. But I just wanted, it, it was more of an aside when sure. um, the other commissioner and I part names, I'm sorry, I'm not familiar. I'll get your names eventually. I'm going to be back in front of you guys a lot uh, <laughs> for this building. Um, but yeah, so yeah, absolutely noted um i uh the only other question i had and this is not really uh, uh this is only potentially within our purview but if you um is it all right for that elevator to not be fully covered yes they're designed oh, right. they're designed to be fully exposed uh i just feel it's more appropriate for um my guest the customer to ensure that they don't have rain or anything like that on them. But the only part that should uh, be exposed in that context is, like I said, it's only, it's like six or eight inches. I, I honestly don't recall off the top of my head now. And we have, because of the trim elements uh, and the shoot, I stopped sharing. But if you look at the trim detail, you'll see that there's like a, it's effectively an inverted half round. I don't know the sure. term for it, but it matches what's there. And that ultimately, I think it, it sticks out about six or eight inches, and that actually might cover it. But you know, rain on an angle, right. yeah, have you? Yeah, that's wonderful. I was just going to suggest if for some reason you had to do something, you could probably do a, a minimally visible small extension in that area out of lucite or something. Uh, but it's nice you won't have to do that. And uh, it's again, uh, it's a very promising uh, proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I definitely considered a lucite type. I was actually thinking of, of just a little metal something because I know plastic, right? Sure. Yeah, well, well, if I have to cross that bridge, we'll get there, so. Great, thank you so much. Yep. Thanks to right. the other commissioners as well. Okay. Um, in, any other commissioners? Okay, nearing none. Any uh, public comments in favor or against this application? All right, I do have a letter to read in. Um, Dear Miss Wolf, this is dated, I'm sorry, uh, March 8th, 2021. We are writing to voice our support for Micah Kerr's application number 6008-21 at 245 Main Street. It would be wonderful for this building to finally be repaired and utilized as a business by someone with the high standards and integrity, integrity as Mr. of Mr. Kerr. We have followed uh, previous applications for this location, which we feel were a wrong fit for the building and which, which propose 
too many changes. Unlike previous applications, Mr. Kerr's proposal ensures that the structure is and, and the aesthetics of this historic building remain intact. Thank you for your consideration. Sincerely, James Polowitzer and Catherine Whitaker. And they reside at 17 Wilcox Street, Mothersfield, Connecticut. All right, moving along. Application number 6009-21, Doug and Ashley Elliott. Hi everyone, um, I'm just gonna share my screen as well. Um, we spoke with you last meeting two weeks ago and um, there's been no changes to our proposal and um, we're still meeting with contractors to um, decide on which one we go for with the roof. But um, we would like to get approval to use the um, Matt Black, and I'm going to just throw it up now. Matt, ba Matt Black standing seam uh, metal roof just on our front porch. Um, we originally asked for the two bay windows as well, but after listening to Vasek and his comments on the um, extra hips and how they'd be covered with the um, metal roof versus tin or copper, um, we will just be asking just for the metal roof and be doing shingles on the two bay windows as well. So um, no changes to the front of the house and the overall shingles, but I just want to make that comment first. Um, so yeah, I've included some examples. Um, and like I said, we are still finalizing the contractor. Okay. Any questions from any of the commissioners? Well, again, really quiet group tonight. All right, good. I think we're, uh, We'll move along. Any uh, comments or uh, in favor or against this application from the public? All right, hearing none. Before I move on to uh, the public meeting, uh, I think there was uh, one of the applicants that wanted to speak. I'm sorry, I have a question. Sure, I'm sorry. Oh, what year was that house built? Which house? That one, the one that you're gonna put a metal roof oh. on. Let me pull up the uh, 1925, I'd guess. This is uh, 1909 in the records. Yeah. No, it wasn't Hubbard. <laughs> no, it's a uh, four square. It's another four square. Okay. All right. I think there was, um, hang on just one second here. There was another applicant that wanted to speak before we moved on to the meeting, Mr. Ferentino? Yes, thank you. Um, one thing we, we failed to mention, it's our understanding that the home that was um, renovated down the street from us on the cul-de-sac, the windows in the front of that home uh, were the Harvey Tribute windows, which are the ones we're proposing. And we just wanted to bring that up before you go into your um, uh, discussion period. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'm going to make, uh, can oh. I have a motion to move? I do to have a question. There's clarification. I'm sorry. I know I could ask right. a question earlier. <laughs> Please go right ahead. So are you guys saying, you, with the questions about the gutter, like Claire, I'm sorry, Ms. Mead, um, without the fascia board, is that what I was confused about um, the discussion, I guess. I. I understood. I don't the think we've had a discussion on it yet. We've just kind of asked you questions. Okay. The comments that were made, I was unclear about what the comments were um, with the gutter hanging. Was that without the fascia board? So the gutter was hanging past the. Doug, I'm sorry. I, I am confused. Can you tell me again? I wouldn't worry about it yet. Yeah. We're going to hash this out. And I'm going to sit here and not be able to say anything. So I want. Exactly. <laughs> And so I was kind of wondering process. what the difference is if the fascia board is there and the gutter hangs on, if it's on the fascia board, what you can't see underneath of the boards. If you take the fascia board off and hang the gutters, how that exposes more. Okay. Essentially to be able to just um, go in and, well, yeah. So I was so, all right, so wait and see. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. No worries. Thank you. All right. Can I have a motion to uh, close the public hearing? Make a motion. Second. 
I need a second. Doug. I'll second. Thank you, Claire. Thank you. All right. Um, all in Doug, favor. all the vote. Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. We have the five five members voting tonight. Actually, you've got four regular members and you have three alternates. All right. So you need to pick Eeny, an alternate. Miney. All right, we'll go with uh, we'll go with Bosick tonight. Well, Damon hasn't been here for a while, but he, 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 I don't care. Uh, normally we do uh, go, Mark, with the person who has longest waited to have the chance to uh, vote. I think that's Damien. Okay. That's only because he's- We're, we're conferred, Dam Damien, you're in. I'm good. Okay. So that's when it comes to voting, but everybody participates. Thank you. All right. All right, public meeting. So can I have a motion on application number 6004-21? I'll make a motion to uh, approve as amended. Uh, Second. Thank you. Yeah, I, I initially voted no on this because you know part of it was the applicant did make the changes that that we that I objected to. Uh, they, as she, the homeowner mentioned, it was their third try. Uh, I'm not quite sure what she meant by that, but uh, it it was. It was. They they worked with us. It was. <laughs> it was a factual statement. There you go. That's what I was trying to get at. But again, I appreciate them and, and their representative, uh, their vendor working with this. Um, and I, I think uh, even though it is vil visible, your eye is drawn to it because of the slope, uh, it is a, probably a minimal impact on the uh, district where it's positioned now. I would agree. I would agree. I love that it's being, uh, you know, we're going to see a short, you know, short piece of, of piping that will go into the ground and that'll be all we'll see in this. That's really nice. Um, yeah, I, I appreciate the efforts that uh, the homeowner and uh, Tesla have made to uh, to make this as uh, low profile or minimal visibility to the district. It was great efforts. Thank you. We we have a responsibility to be careful with with um, solar applications, as with all of our applications. This seems to be um, shaping up to be one of our really successful solar um, installations. So. Again, we appreciate them being so sensitive and working with us. Agree, Claire. Um, I realize that it can be uh, taxing to go through the process, uh, but there's no doubt that what uh, we're ending up with is uh, something that's uh, better than uh, what we began with and uh, that the homeowner uh, is going to profit from that as much as anyone. We appreciate their um, efforts uh, and the contractors' efforts in engaging with us on this. Um, we're lucky to have uh, the contractor working in town and the homeowners uh, working on their at least second house uh, in the district. Thank you. Any other comments? Hearing none, I'll call the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the motion passes. Application number 605-21. Can I have a motion, please? That's a Chester. I'm sorry? I'll, I'll vote, I'll make a motion to approve as currently submitted. Second. Okay, discussion? I think what they came in with, they listened to some of the concerns we have. I think it is gonna be a, a, the modifications they made will work well with that house and certainly with the surrounding houses. Um, you know, the windows I think are miserable, but that's my own personal view on any replacement window of that sort. So, uh, but I'm not voting, so they're off the hook. <laughs> Sure. You've got to, you've got to pass. Yeah, I get a pass on that one. Claire, are you commenting or just commenting no. on? No, on you can. You're passing. welcome to comment, Doug. You take my turn. 
You comment, bud. Uh, uh, I, I um, thought that the house at 77 had tributes in the front. Um, so I do think that to a certain extent, um, we've already seen a successful installation of them in white on the street. On the other hand, they do have shutters uh, and they're uh, uh, shrouded to a certain extent because of that. On the other hand, these are black. Uh, so this will give us a chance to see them. Uh, and as I said, uh, because the whole house is being reskinned, I think that this is going to be more successful than it would otherwise be. Um, it'll be interesting to see uh, if the um, result in black uh, ends up being uh, uh, adventurous and successful or um, uh, causes hesitation. Uh, but I think they've really done uh, a nice job in trying to uh, modernize the house while still being respectful to the others on the street uh, and to that house itself. Uh, so uh, we're uh, fortunate that they uh, were uh, so earnest in that effort and wish them great success. Thank you, Derek. Where are you going? <laughs> no. I, I just, thank you. I, I just like to say, uh, you, to ditto what everyone's saying here, you know, they shared, especially on those returns and the cutting down the overhang from the 12 to six inches really will soften that, that change that facade and uh, wish them well in their project as well. Very good. All right, any other comments? All right, I'll call the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the motion passes. All right, application number 6006-21. Mark, um, could you at least read the uh, address? The address? Yeah, 44 Church Street, the Yankee I'm Gutters. Sure. I'll make a motion. Um, to approve with the following stipulation that uh, no more than six inches uh, be removed from the tails with the uh, half round gutter to be uh, hung on uh, the exposed ends of that, um, of, of those tails. Um, and that would be up on the main roof uh, on the lower roofs, um, it sounds like they're not anticipating putting gutters at all. Um, so I don't think we have to say anything other than that there shouldn't be any changes to the lower uh, roofs profile. Um, and this is a uh, um, motion made for discussion. So I welcome a second and then we can get onto the discussion. Do I have a second? A second for discussion. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Okay, uh, Doug, major problems. They have Yankee gutters that stick out over three feet out past the edge of the uh, slope of the roof. They have, unless they actually do chop off two feet off those overhangs, uh, simply going to removing of Yankee gutter and hanging a, any other kind of gutter off the end of it is not gonna eliminate the flat roof. That applies to the top, that applies to the porches. To rebuild this without Yankee gutters is gonna involve either reframing the roof or reframing the ends of the roof to give them a sort of curve, which is not keeping with a Italianette, uh, but that would get the water out to where it needs to drop into the gutter. Uh, because of the design of the house, because of the gutters, they have some, without butchering the 
house in a horrible way, they have a lot of very interesting reconstruction to do to make it work well. I have a question for you. I'd say basically this needs to be tabled for at least one meeting for both, certainly for the applicant to do a little bit more exploration, get their contractor actually to look into the attic to see what the hell's going on in there. Obviously that hasn't been done yet. Uh, they're throwing out ideas without having done much probably without doing, having done much exploratory surgery to find out what the problems really are. Hey, I'm, just, I, 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 I'm sorry. I just wanted to say, because uh, I want to clarify with Vatsuk, because part of the reason I made this motion is that, are, are you basically saying that the current roof ends at the wall? No. And it does, the slope doesn't end at the wall? No, I suspect the slope ends about a foot or so out, and then there's the Yankee gutter. Well, I guess what I'm saying is, is that I, first of all, I agree with tabling it so that we see exactly what we would be getting. But um, I guess if, if it's a question of whether or not that roof has to be rebuilt so that they have a slope that still overhangs far enough uh, and still goes and still works with a half round. I think part of what is worth discussing tonight is whether the concept of uh, a half round hanging on the end of those exposed rafter tails has any kind of support. If it does, then we kind of go to the investigation stage. We see how, where does the slope on the current roof end? If it ends too soon, are they willing to rebuild the whole top of the roof so that they get the overhang they need, you know, that kind of thing. I'm just wondering philosophically how people feel about hanging the half round at the end of the rafter tails. And that is not an unheard of installation on bungalows and, and houses of this vintage in Weathersfield. Yeah, so you can hang it off the rafter tails or you can hang it off straps off the decking of the roof. Right. I, I, uh, I, are y'all finished? Yes. Sorry. Okay. Um, I, I want to say, Doug, to your philosophical question, um, I philosophically think that to hang gutters and obscure the rafters takes off a major, major feature of this house. I think that trying to play a game of six inches versus a foot versus that, that's a, a, a failure waiting to happen. Um, when you look at the house, what you notice are the rafters. I mean, that's the prominent design feature. It's a, a bungalow, it's a, not a bungalow, but it's a, a Hubbard. Um, and I think we would be doing a true disservice to the district to allow that to happen. There are two other houses. Um, the one that, that the, I have the number in my head is the two houses down, it's 52 maybe. Yes. Um, really, really a, a very, um, telling example of what happens when you begin to, to change that rafter look. So I would not be in favor. I'm not, I'm not opposed to, if Vasa can think of a way to do a, a, a gutter, I'm not opposed to gutters. If you can think about a way to do a gutter without it obscuring those rafters uh, and the ends of the rafters, but I, I just don't think we can lose that. Yeah, we, we don't know if these rafters end at the wall and these are sistered in and just ornamental. Right. I mean, the contractor, had not been to the attic yet, as Vasek mentioned. Uh, and, and you know, there was a conversation about rot and we need to get rid of the rot, but you could get rid of the rot and fix those rafters and still not put a gutter that obscures the whole, the whole protrusion. So I think tabling is a good idea. Let the applicants do some thinking. Um, but for me, they're going to have to come up with a solution that doesn't change the visual. All right, can we? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll withdraw the. I'll, I'll, I'll walk back. Yep. I'll it's withdraw okay. my motion, and Chris, thanks for withdrawing your second. And I'll make a new motion to uh, table. And Chris, do you want a second? Sure. All right. I think we've had a good amount of discussion on this. Plenty. Shall we? Uh, shall we move to vote? Yes. All right. Aye. All in favor? 
Aye. 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 Any against? The motion to table is, uh, is moving. All right, uh, application number 6007-21, 32 Church Street. Can I have a motion? I'll move to approve as submitted. Can I have a second? Second. Uh, all right, discussion? It's gonna have a very minimal impact on the district. Um, the I do recall uh, the fence that uh, was supposed to uh, line the back of this house and uh, hopefully we'll um, uh, get used to it as we tend to most uh, um, fences like this. Um, so um, at that point, the impact is going to be very minimal. Indeed, the rest of the house has modern materials since it was a modern build. Um, although it was done in a very uh, sensitive way um, and that has always been appreciated by um, this homeowner and contractor. Any other comments? All right, hearing none, I'll call, I'll call the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. The motion passes. We'll move on to application number 6008 21, 245 Main Street, the Masonic Temple. Can I have a motion, please? I'll move to approve as submitted. I'll second it. Okay. Discussion? It's an exciting project um, with a very sensitive approach and minimal changes. It's great. Let me agree more. Very excited to have that in the district. Yeah. Claire's right. And I said my piece during the uh, hearing. Thank you. All right. Any other comments? Yeah, I think uh, if the applicant pulls off what he's proposing to do, it, I think most people will be very, very hard pressed to recognize the difference between what was and what will be. So, very good point. Yeah, I agree. All right. I'll call the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, we'll move on to application number 6009-21, uh, Doug and Ashley Elliott at 30 Broad Street. Can I have a motion, please? Move to approve as submitted. A second. Comments? Uh, yes. Um, we have an example of a porch like this down the street in copper. Um, whether it's copper or black, um, there. this house is a little bit different because it has uh, something other than wood siding on it. Uh, so I do think that the slightly newer look of the black uh, is acceptable. Um, also, uh, lead uh, standing seam or other kinds of metal roofs often tarnish to that same kind of dark color. So it's not unheard of. In fact, I think they're on the Belden house uh, on the side porches. And uh, the um, I, I think that the effort to kind of coordinate the color with the color of the roof uh, and um, all the other work that they've done on the house kind of coordinates it with respect to age. So none of these materials will uh, individually look out of place. Wish them well. I agree with Doug. Uh, I don't think your eyes drawn more to the top roof in, in the Widow's kind of a uh, dormer there, so minimal impact um, as well. Yeah, the view from across the green is di is distant, and the grew the view from their side of the green is even steeper. So, any other comments? I think it's going to look great. I love metal roofs. Yeah, me too. All right. Could start a trend. I think it will. <laughs> we got it. We got it. I'm noticing more and more in the district. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, um, we'll move on to approval of minutes, February 23rd, 2021. I'll get out of uh, Doug's way and I'll make a motion. 
Thank you very much, Chris. And I'll second it with uh, the comment that we greatly appreciate the efforts of our uh, reporter, Linda, and our uh, historic district coordinator, Kim, uh, in assisting all the uh, commissioners and the public in our efforts. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. I uh, will call the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, moving on. Uh, other business, Kim? We have um, Micah Kerr coming in for, um, for 245 Main. Okay. Coming Somewhere. In. <laughs> Mike, are you there? Oh, I'm working on it. Unmute here. Sorry, that was a quick turnaround. I was just talking to my architect. <laughs> right. All right. Mr. Kerr, what else you got? Yeah. All right. So this is going to be a lot more, hmm, I say it's a little bit tougher. Let's go there, right? Um, because fencing is something that I know the um, I know the commission has a lot of rules. I, well, not a lot of rules. I mean, I read your handbook. There are virtually essentially two major styles of fence that are um, encouraged within the district. Um, I, for, for a lot of my fencing, that's not a problem. But when it comes to a privacy fence, there really isn't anything that is um, other than, I believe it said a block fence, like a wall, like in that regard. Um, I don't think there is really a, a good solution for a true privacy fence. And it might be, I'm just sharing this, something you guys might wanna look at if you don't wanna take everyone individually. But uh, apparently the choice that you get proposed often is a stockade fence like you get from Home Depot uh, or Lowe's or sorry, not to be brand specific if you're a Lowe's person. Um, they're ugly and they don't really belong in the historic district. So I don't wanna build that, but if you tell me I have to, then I will. OK, um, I want to protect my neighbor. Uh, if I'm going to be operating a business in that location, it behooves me to not have any visible uh, unattractiveness facing my neighbor. It is also behooves me to stifle any noise I can through a wall uh, that is pretty substantial because that is how you stifle noise um, and also planting it with vegetation. So specifically, for the um, fencing aspect of this project, the, the biggest question comes down to the fence that um, follows my Western property line um, between the back of my building, which is on the church side, um, and the, the neighbors, which I think is a, there's a two family house right there. And um, I, I did engage the neighbors. Uh, I asked them what they would like. I stood out there and I, I, you know, put some things that would allow me to see what a six foot fence would do. And uh, it is my opinion that a six foot fence is nowhere near tall enough to make their lives any better uh, because the nature of their home and um, also 245 Main is that they're um, kind of short, I don't know what the term for it is, but only partial, they're full basements, but they're not, um, at ground level the you know they're the uh, ground level in, in the case of the the mason hall is 56 inches above the the soil so the you have a very similar experience at the home next door and so a six foot fence is is we're just going to be staring at each other in the windows and any noise is going to go right to them and and vice versa so i'm going to if it's i'd like to propose an eight foot fence obviously i have to go through zoning for that i'm aware of it uh, and that has its own uh, risks, I guess. I'll use that word. Um, but I, that's my intention to propose it. I, I am also going to propose a custom fence. So if you look at your thing, if you guys let me show uh, my deck, or, or I guess I'm probably allowed to again, um, but I just don't want to do it without letting you know. Please do. Um, so anybody else in the meeting can see it. Uh, you see that there? Oh, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to skip right ahead to the good stuff because most of the words are just for the commissioners to be able to read as we go through it. But uh, I, I want to really, the custom uh, privacy fence is going to be a key thing here. So on this little map, which is not what you'll officially be proposing, um, but we'll get a site plan properly from the engineer and everything. 
But the fence I'm talking about right now is this red line over here on the left side of your screen, which is immediately adjacent to a residential property there. Uh, 25B, it looks like it is. I don't, I don't know. Um, so when I spoke to the homeowner, he seemed uh, generally supportive of the aesthetic. However, um, something that I'm aware of is it is not a colonial looking fence. It is. But you don't have a colonial building. I so agree. It doesn't I, matter. I'm aware of that, but I don't That's know. That's a really great thing. Like, this is only my second time meeting you all. <laughs> Mr. Kerr, pick a fence. We don't really, it's going right. to be good. Well, I like those. So my preference is probably the one on the right more in terms of a color. I was thinking on the chestnut side. It doesn't really matter because it's going to be completely covered with honeysuckle. I have major wheeler honeysuckle at my house here. It grows fantastically and it is indigenous. Um, this fence will be completely covered within a year or two. And there will be about a one foot area on the top, which will be all just flowers. And it flowers for about six months. It is green for about 10 months. Uh, my plant outside has a few little green leaves on it still somehow. I don't Can know. Can I how. ask you a question? I'm just curious. What are you going to use that back lot for? Uh, Honestly, still working on it. So let me back out just a sec. Uh, this is unrelated, I guess, to what I'm really seeking clarity on today, because I'm definitely going to have to come back for that because it's a work in progress, right? I'm sorry, I'm looking at your little picture, not camera. <laughs> um, so I don't have much space outside of the building. It's a very exposed lot in the sense that the approximately uh, 60 feet between the rear of the building and that fence I'm speaking of right now um, is, is 60 feet of open space right now. Uh, you can see straight through to Comstock and Fair. They have um, the heirloom market. I don't know what it's referred to as now, but they have a strip of land that immediately is adjacent to mine. And um, so, you know, I have to be sensitive to that, but I do see the need, if you see what I drew on there, there is likely going to be some kind of future garage. Not for cars per se, it's definitely gonna, I, I think I might need to make it look like a garage. I really don't know about the aesthetics, so please don't judge me yet, okay? <laughs> um, the goal there is I need a space to um, put in either lower access to the, the basement floor level, or put a hydraulic lift in that can lower heavy things down to the basement height and or lift things out. Because the process of making beer is everything's heavy. Um, grain is heavy to begin with, but when you get it wet to make the beer, it becomes much more heavy and I need to lift it out so I can get it to Hayes Farm to feed their cows and pigs, right? Um, which is where it's going, by the way, Hayes Farm. Right. Um, I have a quick question. Um, the Did I, pardon me the, before you start. Oh, sorry, uh, sure. Claire. I, I'm not. I don't know if I'm quite done answering your question. So, um, the garage will be there, and at some point, I expect there will be vehicular access to said garage. And if they ask me to put in some parking spaces, I will. It's not my intent to make a parking area. There will never be enough parking in the center of the village. I think it's nice to have some grass, quite frankly. Um, I just wondered if you were going to have outside tables. Oh, not back there. No. Okay. No. Uh, and that's when I spoke to the neighbors, um, that's something that uh, we immediately discussed is they wanted to know if I would have customer access back there. And that is unequivocally no, because that's, that's back of house. So the only place on this little drawing that you see is inside the green area is that is where I hope to be able to have customers, okay? Okay, thank so, you. Does that help you? Yeah, yeah, I just was curious. I didn't hear, was that Doug? Was that who, who spoke? Yes. That? Sorry, Doug, go ahead. Oh, that's okay, so it- Commissioner it, it, Obian. I'm sorry, sorry. I, don't know, I don't know the formalities. Thank you. Uh, so what I was gonna say is I, I appreciated the answer you gave to uh, the question that Claire asked, because it does impact on what kind of fence seems to be the right thing to put there. And I, it's interesting that you're talking about a fence that will hold plants. And so maybe that helps to mitigate the height. But if part of your goal is to have it be a sound block, doesn't that 
fence look louvered so that the sound would travel through it? So the scientific nature of sound waves is that they travel in a straight line until they interact with something. The more solid the object they hit, the more is absorbed by the um, actual structure. By using what they call, this is shadow boxing on a fence. So this would be referred to as a horizontal right. shadow box fence, right? So those, um, we'll call them those boxes, those um, areas will be filled with plants which will help scatter the sound waves. And then when they hit the wood that's on both sides of it, they will be absorbed. If you, I did a little bit of research on acoustic fences and this is pretty much considered like one of the best designs for acoustic fences, which is why you see them pretty heavily in, in urban environments and like Great. cool neighborhoods or what have you. You can mm -hmm. put acoustic panels in them, but I don't think that could possibly work out for more than a year or two until they rot, you know? Okay. Um, but the plants are going to do the heavy lifting, honestly. Thank now, you. Now, Micah, uh, just quick. So you, to get your eight feet, this could it be six foot panels? Because there is one of your drawings off to the left here where maybe two feet is, it looks like blocks or some oh, type of wall yeah. or so you berm it up or whatever. These were more for options because I wasn't, I, I, frankly, uh, knowing that I wasn't going to propose one of the two styles that was in your handbook. I, I wanted to show a few different versions of this kind of fencing so that maybe if you wanted to direct me, there would be a little bit more uh, options to work with. So uh, if you're re referencing the one here on the left, um, I don't inherently want this, but the one on the left shows the shadow boxing very well, right? So that's uh, why- I was just kind of that. referencing the difference. Do you go the full wood or do you- I much prefer some uh, height with a uh, block of some type. Oh, Obviously like not those cinder block? blocks. No, no I'm, I'm not suggesting you're, you're just showing the photos, but is that an option where you go to six feet? This is a block? Eight I mean, foot, what do you prefer? Is this really appears to be an eight foot fence on top of at least three feet of block. Correct. Um, I don't want any block. I don't feel as though that's appropriate. Right. For the so, so your proposal is all wood. All wood. Would be. Yep. Um, yeah, that's Thank why you. if I really were to go look at the actual, these both are much closer. This, um, the one on the left looks like it has some kind of silt fabric, but um, I don't foresee using a silt fabric uh, as a- Now there's some skirting there. What are those posts? Are, are those steel posts? Um, I believe they're, they're painted four Just by painted. four. My intent is to use a four by four pressure treated and one by eights pressure treated um, and I will stain them to, I think I mentioned um, beach. What, what the heck type of wood did I pick? Chestnut. That, that's okay. What's the width of this fence? What's... When you say width, you mean the thickness? The dimensional width. You've got it's, the two... So you'll have a, a four inch, oh, excuse me, you'll have a four by four. Four by four post. And yeah. so that's actually, it's not a full four inches. It's, you know, you, so you end up with... It's, it's substantial from the corner. It ends up being approximately five and a half inches with the one by six or the one by eight on each side plus the um, the actual posts. So it's it's we'll call it call it six inches if you like. It's um, in terms of the dimensionality, it's a, a four by four plus a one by six plus a one by six. But it, it because you know the nature of wood is it's thinner than that. So I have to say that given the location of this fence. Um, the other commissioners have heard me talk a lot about the fact that I wish we would just do a blanket approval for fences because I, I think we get into a lot of conversations that really aren't about historical appropriateness. Mm -hmm. um, but when I think about the location of this fence, it's going to be very close to your neighbor and very far away from the building. And so I would probably be trying to, to theme it, if you will, style it, if you will to make it look like something that would work with the neighbor's house um, and not so really match, worry match about coming up with something that bit. would work. Hang on, let me just finish, honey. Not necessarily make worry about when, something that would quote work with the big um, Masonic temple. I don't have a problem with this fence say, having said that. I will say I see your picket fence and I gotta be honest, it's a little jarring to me and it's an aesthetic piece. It's not a historical appropriateness, but uh, this Wait, I'm is sorry, a, which, a which one are you talking about now? I'm sorry? What, what are you talking about now? You're Paint showing pick fences. This? Yep. Okay. Sorry, so 
I, I you're serving alcohol. I don't know if you have to have fences in other areas. I, I personally find that kind of jarring with a very utilitarian structure on your west boundary. So I would prefer to see something that holds more consistently across the whole property. So you're saying more along the lines of the aesthetic of a picket fence on the west to match? Or No, not necessarily. I personally even like pickets, but think about, could you do something that's the west and pull that all around the, the rest? I Look, I would love to do that, but my thought, yeah, I mean, I really would. Um, so what I could, what I would be very easy for me to do is, you know, going back instead of proposing picket, which again, I tried to use picket because it's what's in your handbook. So that's, you know, I mean, I, I don't, you know, but when it comes to an aesthetic, I would love to run something that is horizontal boards stepping around the property, because if you look at into it, this is the closest to a federalist design fence as you can get, even though it's more associated with mid mod and and more modern structures is, uh, you know, that square boxy federalist. Um, and we're going to- I, I, I think this is a, we are, this is adaptive reuse. You're taking yeah. a Masonic temple and turning it into a brewery. Yep. You know, what, what are we going to use as the aesthetic cues? I just think- I don't know. <laughs> it's going to, visually, it's going to look better to be all the same. That's my comment. I, I'd be happy to do that, but I, like I said, I'll, I, I'm going to. The point of this is obviously to get your feedback because, boy, I'm a little lost on this, you know, and not not lost in the sense of I don't know how to proceed. I am open to anything, um, truly. In the long term, I think ideally, if I had the funds, I would love to put in a black um, wrought iron fence to match the church across the street plant ivy along the edge, but I don't have the budget for that at this time. So this is kind of, again, me trying to figure out a way to activate the building as best I can in a, a respectful and reasonable manner going forward, you know? Um, okay. All right. So, All good points. Um, I, I'm, like I said, I, I'm, I'm up for anything. I just thought matching this fence because it will, this corner pole is right here pictured is where I will come off of and go to my you know, that west wall of my property. And the purpose of that is to allow people to still have an aesthetic look through at Comstock Fair when they drive by, but also have a, we'll call it village appropriate looking fence and to match the neighbors, etc. You know, I know I, I've heard that, you know, not every fence is considered equal, but, you know, the goal being to match um, whatever else is happening and, and do my best to make it look right. Um, all right. Well, we're, Michael, we're going to need to move along here. Yeah. Uh, we've got so, a couple other in the hopper here. Yeah, I know. I, I, I was kind of trying to go through some points, but I, I'm being, uh, I, I don't, I don't know if I have a good feeling about where to propose on this back fence. I'm hearing both that it doesn't matter, but also you'd like them all to kind of match. So if the that preference was my opinion. Yep, that, yeah. I don't know. If, I don't know if you could make them. And uh, as, in my in my eyes, I, I don't know if you could could make them match, especially if you're trying to block the back end on the west side for the neighbor. That almost has to be a completely different. Yeah, I mean, I love the idea that you're putting, you know, uh, the 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 uh, How do you, you know plants in in it in with it that will kind of you know give it a little bit more warm feel, a little bit more natural feel. Um, and I think that would probably be much more welcoming to your neighbors as well. But um, but for the side where you're going to want some people to be able to kind of view inside, mm -hmm. you know, and get, uh, you know, a look into where you're going to have consumers, customers, you know, I, I don't know if you can, you can, you know, replicate this back wall. I and wouldn't do it as tall, but lower. No, I absolutely can replicate it. I'm going to build it myself. I mean, it's all going to be custom. I'm, I'm personally going to be doing the construction. I'm not digging the holes, but other than that, I'm going to be doing the building, the staining of this, because I've built all the fences at my house now, and I feel pretty confident in that. Um, so I can replicate the design for either which way, and my cost is still going to be less than going to Home Depot or Lowe's and ordering those panels, you know? Yeah. Do you have any pictures of how this looks Uh done at your house that you can share with us next time maybe um 
Other than you want to share with there? Kim? I, I don't, the fences I have that I've done for my house are different because there's, a, I use a black wire mesh as the center and I built panels using oh, okay. a beveled top to keep the water running off with black wire mesh as a central panel, mainly just to keep my dogs in. Um, I have a privacy screen. I have, um, I think I actually might have shared that photo with at least the neighbor anyway, but I have a privacy screen, which I did, which is actually a little bit more modern than this. And that's what has the major wheel or honeysuckle growing on it now. So I can easily send off photos to you folks. Um, yeah, that'd be a great idea. And uh, Mr. Carr, I just want to make it clear when I was saying take this style of fence and run it along the other parameters. I did not mean an eight foot fence. I mean, drop it down. Oh no, I know. Yeah. Right. Just, yeah. Just it's, it's, it's clear. I think it's three feet would be probably what I would propose around the rest. And yeah. that, so let me just, so if it's, if you will allow just to go back to a key thing, I really need to kind of get some feedback from you guys on is the patio space. Um, I, I, I found out that it is totally ex, uh, acceptable and pretty normal to ask for the use of that unused land since I'm the guy that's gonna be mowing it and uh, everything. And there's a big swath of, of unused land between uh, my the property line and the sidewalk. I want to activate that. I, I um, So I drew this green line to represent what I think the patio should be uh, in the sense that it uh, lines up with the fence that the neighbors have and I should say the entire block has. Um, so I'll line it up with whatever that is and run it across, likely planting some ivy in that little gap so it doesn't become a mud puddle. Um, if I am allowed, I will extend the sidewalk to make it wider because I think the sidewalks are too narrow there. Um, up at the corner, I want to put a gate over here. If you see my mouse. Yeah. My corner. Uh, I want to put a gate so that when folks come across the um, intersection, they can enter the patio first if they like without going down the sidewalk and again it's not a it's not a wide enough sidewalk in this one area I believe um, it'll also allow me to take care of there's a lot of drainage issues around that point of the property the sidewalk that was installed is always a mud puddle if you go through there so I'd want to put like at least a dry well in and maybe uh, put some more bricks in the area to um, make that corner more pedestrian friendly because it's well uh, uh, is Clara, uh, is what you're saying that you would be satisfied with a three foot version of the rear fence in this whole area that he's just describing? Or is that where you want, Micah, a, uh, a, the picket fence? My wants are I want to be able to operate the aesthetic. He wants approval. I want to approve. Okay, yeah. I That's why I'm to build whatever because I can. You know, well, um, I, I think that ideally, I, I think ideally, if you don't, uh, I mean, that would seem to be the ideal place for metal fencing. But if you don't have the budget for black metal fencing right now, or you have other reasons for wanting budget. wood fencing, uh, I, 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 I'm not saying that I uh, couldn't embrace the idea of shadow box wood all around the front, but that's uh, a pretty dramatically different look, Claire. And uh, yep, what I was talking about was along the line between him and Comstock. Okay. I wasn't. I didn't know at the front. Uh, I just okay. think that that picket fence is totally wrong in front of the Masonic Temple. Yeah, this, I mean, this fence here. Uh, I agree. I just yeah. that picket fence is just wrong. I mean, it's fine along the Belden House. That is what it is. But right. we just that's just wrong. I don't know. Yeah. So when it comes to the interaction of a fence at this corner, right? I mean, obviously I could put in the other fence from this corner over to the eight foot fence and run it. At, I think that's a, I feel like that is a three foot fence. I don't believe it's a four foot fence because uh, I stood next to it uh, to take these photos. But so if I were to run a three foot tall version of more of the horizontal board fence to go intersect at the far side, that seems more agreeable because it would then meld in with the, the fence I'm proposing on the West End? I, I would say it could be an option. Okay. You did that, oh, if you just see, if you did the board fence that you built, the shatter box yep. on the West and the North. Yep. Check your budget and see if you have enough for metal on the South 
and the All east. All right, I'll, I'll check, but I just know that metal is wildly expensive. And unfortunately, when you start to save money on the metal, you get this tacky looking stuff. Get what you pay for. Right, when, when I put the metal in front of this, so I want to, to be really direct, my plan, I want to put in this um, picket fence similar to what Lucky Lou's has because apparently that was good enough for folks. I don't know. Uh, but then I want to tear it down when I can afford to and put down a proper fence that matches the church because not matches the church, but at least plays a, a, a plays well with others. Because I think that the only appropriate aesthetic for this visible of a parcel is the wrought iron, even though this building is only from 1922. It, it seems more appropriate. I mean, they incorporated the wrought iron in the railings up front. So it, it there is already, um, I guess, a precedent for that on this well, property. What what about black aluminum in the meantime? Is it that much more expensive that it doesn't make it worth it? I think it's really tacky. No, I mean, it's, it, it, you well, can, it's, it's clearly it's, not wrought iron. I, I you mean, should look. Uh, you should look at what um, the Charles is using for their fencing. He's I using black they aluminum. They haven't built. He's it using yet. aluminum. Yeah, like a pool enclosures that we have many of those around the district. Yeah, we got tons of them. Okay. And there's different styles. Yeah, I mean, yeah because I, unfortunately, this is the best pick, picture of this picket fence. These aren't even dolled in, in spite of this one corner here. Yeah, this corner is. I actually looked, but uh, that that one is, but the rest aren't. I mean, they, it was not. I kind of again, thought I'd paint it also with their <laughs> approval. Yeah, that's the first coat, but- uh, That's kind of my thought, yeah. It, it definitely <laughs> was not uh, installed that you would expect a traditional picket fence. So. Yeah, but, but I mean, even even good quality well installed is just, it's just wrong. In it's not the right, building. it, it wouldn't right. fit, no doubt, because okay. you don't want to leave it natural or white. It doesn't, So I'd be in favor kind of with I do, your and north I do exposure like and your idea. west. Right. But you need space because remember that's a busy corner. I, I think the town, even if it's going to be three feet, you're going to have to have line of sight. Uh, there are many faux metal or wrought iron top style fences out there, and, and I believe yeah, the Charles is going to have a two, uh, one on their perimeter and one around their uh, uh, deck yeah. uh, pagoda area. Okay, so there's options. I will reach out to Bryce and ask him to like if he's got samples or can send. Ask him to share. Yeah. Um, and a lot of our fences right, don't come from Home Depot or Lowe's either that come in front of us. There's a lot of fence yeah. installers, manufacturers out there. I'm not inherently prejudiced against those guys. I just no, you know, but you mentioned no. them, so. I, I, I did study history at university and early American history, and I'll tell you, they didn't have aluminum. Um, right. Anyway, I digress. Uh, real quick, because we talked about the fencing, I think I have enough information there. Um, like I said, this is uh, what Lucky Lou's has. I'm partially showing because you can see he's got the brick patio over there, right? Mm -hmm. um, he's got if I'm trying out. to activate as much of, and granted where the line is, I, I would love a little bit of feedback. You say you have some concern about the driving side over here, potentially the view. I'll, I'll look at not that. the driving side, the, the line of sight that yeah. you know you have to have. And have that's not our responsibility, line of sight. but the town will. Yeah, but yeah, I'll still, I'm gonna run out there and I'll, I'll, I'll pop a stake where it should be. And so I can see and drive around it, you know, like to catch a, an idea. So it's for cars. So cars coming from either yep. side, you know, that we, we already had, that's a busy intersection. Yep, I'll, I'll definitely check what the effects of any fence there and come up with Yeah, that's one. not our purview, correct. That's, yeah, it's, but I mean, you're concerned. I mean, we're all, and we're all looking for the same thing here, right, um, in a way. Go uh, jump back quick, Micah, too. I know we got to move along fast, but are you? Yeah, we, we have, land. We have two, more, there, two yeah. more applications we have to get. Two through. more? Wow. Now, yeah. are you purchased? Can I ask, are you purchasing this building? Or are you going to be a tenant? Not at or this time. The plan, not at this time. Okay. I, I would love to, but. Yeah. Um, That's okay. No, you answered. Thank you. The, the time it would take to make a transaction happen would slow down my ability to be open because I, I feel like there's a huge movement for people that need to actually interact with people again. And I want to be able to take advantage of that. And that's why the patio is so important in a time of COVID, right? Like, I, I don't know what'll happen come fall, but I'm guessing we're still going to be wearing masks, you know? And so in that context, I can't count on the inside of this building paying the rent. I need right. to count on some additional income from the lawn. And my intent there is to um, use the patio as a not not very finished patio, but just to allow additional capacity outside. 
Right. We look forward to the application. Um, okay. So uh, no feedback on any preferences for materials there or? Are you going to cover it? Are you having a covering a tent? You're going to use a tent this year or what are you going to do? I, I, I don't think I would cover it. I think I would probably take my time on planting the appropriate plants to grow some natural covering, mixing that. I, I currently like to use um, a sail instead of any kind of cam. Like I'll use an actual sail from a sailboat for um, a sun shade because it's got a much better sound to it than anything you can buy out there in the market. Mm -hmm. uh, but I can, I'll, I'll share any pictures if I'm going to put any covers in. The biggest I'll go is um, Twinkle Lights, much again, like Lucky Lou's has. He has these posts over here, and then he's got the wires run between the posts um, to create some, you know, aesthetic lighting on a patio. Um, All right. I, I'm sensing there's, a, there's some rush here, so I'll, I guess I'll go. But um, Micah. I appreciate the efforts here. We, uh, we're excited about the project. We're looking forward to the application. But yeah, we are we are kind of pressed for time. We've got to right. go so the formal application is coming in two weeks. Can I ask um, if there's any, if anyone feels interested to please share with Kim any material feedbacks or preferences that you suspect that you or the commission might have so that I can provide you a better application in two weeks? Sounds good. my intent good. to run in with this. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Appreciate it. All right. We have 400 Harper Dab, I believe, is next. Hey, guys. We just love seeing you guys every Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> um, I think Matt has the plans to pull up. Yeah, I'll pull, I'll pull those up. Yeah, we, we took some. And I think Tom, our architect, is with us again. Yeah. So, uh, so we, we did take some feedback from the last time we were here. We uh, made some changes. So I'll bring up the reduce the depth. Can't hear you. Matt, you're, you, we can't hear you. It's like you're muted. Oh, I'm not muted. Yell. Step Hello. Up to the mic, man. Oh, there you up are. to the mic. <laughs> I don't know. I'm hard to hear, I guess. No, it was like you were muted. We can hear you now. I don't know. Okay. So yeah, yeah. So we, we had taken we had taken some feedback. There's a lot of stuff we changed. Uh, essentially we we've managed, I think, a lower structure and set it back as well. And more so than we changed the, last the crown mold and the rake. Now, would you have to scream at this? Matt, do you want me to go through it? Um, yeah. Why don't you Why don't you go through it, Tom, and I'll I'll bring up the drawing here. Okay. I don't know if you can hear me better than uh, than Matt yes. coming through, but yes, much so clearer. Thank you. We were able to um, we reduce the height of the building by one foot eight to two feet, depending on the, uh, where we're taking the dimension from. We're able to, to get three feet of separation between the roof of the existing house and the roof of the, the proposed structure. Uh, that is based on an actual site dimension on the existing house. Um, we, so the house is, the garage is now two feet lower, but we've also lowered the house on grade. So it'll actually be a foot lower than the existing garage is now. And it will be moved rearward um, approximately 13 feet so that it would be six and a half to seven feet uh, rearward of the face of the house and 12 inches lower than in relation to the existing grade. So that, that gives us the total of about three foot three inches of separation ridge to ridge. We also shortened the garage by four feet. We went from a four car garage to a three car based on uh, maintaining stair access to the second floor. We kept the Gambrell style because we felt that it diminishes the building the most but allows for the most use of the second floor. Um, we explored other options uh, in keeping with some of the suggestions that were made, but in order to still have the use of the second floor each of those options made it look at least as large as, as this looks. Um, we 
um, went with a more primitive front. The, the carriage doors are much more simplistic. The, we went with a single window on the front. The shutters could be removed, um, just keep maintaining the window, or they could be left, they would be functional. The siding is barn board siding, would be a seven and a half inch shiplap siding. Um, all the crown on the building was removed, so now that it's, it's uh, flat, um, more primitive trim style. If you could rotate that, Matt, the, the windows were reduced. Uh, they were formerly three feet by three feet. They're now two foot eight by two foot eight. So I made them four inches smaller in each direction to be more in keeping with barn windows. And the, uh, let's see, we've got the, I think that pretty much covers it. Um, again, four feet shorter. Uh, three feet shorter than the roof of the house, two feet shorter than it was before, one foot drop in grade in relation to the existing garage, and six and a half to seven feet um, separation from the front of the house to the front of the garage. Okay. Would there be a way to stake this out so we could see how it sits on the property? Or plot, plot plan? A plot plan Absolutely. to see. Yeah, that'd be yep, helpful. I can, I can get the plot plan, but uh, we with also dimensions, put it on. with with dimensions. So you know, you said it's four feet shorter, but it'd be really helpful to see like it's this this long by this wide. Yeah, we. I have a plan. Uh, I have uh, plans too. If you want me to. Yep, it's it's uh, twenty four feet wide and thirty four feet long now, uh, but the plans do show the dimensions. It, the plans also give the square footage, and there's uh, sh sections showing the the interior spaces, at least the uh, head height. Uh, basically, we dropped the ceiling height on the first floor, and I redesigned the structure on the second floor and lowered that as well, and adjusted the the timber structure on the interior so that I could get enough head height for the windows. Uh, but this is this is to scale. Um, and it's inserted on the site. There are some obvious visual limitations with the, sure. how that looks. But if you go to an, an overhead view, it does give you a pretty good feel of how that looks on site. And this is the, you can see the one foot drop in grade uh, in relation to the grade that the house is resting on. And um, the ridge line is well, three foot three and 11 16 slower now. Um, it was formerly about 24 foot six in height, and we are now have 22 foot two and five sixteenths. Um, Is there a side view? I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, I'd like yes. to see the side view uh, uh, looking from the north to the south, so we can see in uh, just how much farther this building extends yeah we need to see it in context with the house oh, okay. right yeah let me do that. thanks I, I oh thank you well that's not that's not the north yeah perspective um yeah you want the the perspective from the north well uh, this is an improvement in terms of helping me see that it it uh, looks like it extends about a third of, oh, I guess half the way of the, oh, more than half. <laughs> okay. All right. So it starts behind Taking the house. out your neighbor's pool, that's for sure. <laughs> so it starts behind the house and it ends before the back of the gamble edition on the house. Correct. Thank you. And formerly in the previous meeting, we had the front of the house and the front of the garage were aligned. Correct. That's now again about six and a half feet rearward moving. But yeah. with the shortening of the garage by four feet, the back of the garage is only two feet further um, to the, I guess that would be the east. 
than um, it currently it previously was. Thank you. Claire, what was your concern? Uh, not anything from the historic district's perspective. I'm just still processing. Thank you. It is. I mean, if these images are accurate, they are a big help. Uh, they either uh, help sell it or, or don't. But uh, if they're believed to be accurate, I do uh, really appreciate the uh, images and the imaging that was rendered for this. Yeah, they, we do have some. They are accurate. Um, you know, I don't know if it's worth seeing some of the some of the options we talked about last time. Tom um, did it. So the, just to just to clarify, the uh, the house model is the closest approximation I could come up with based on the the house addition architects' information. I haven't visited the site to take dimensions, but the the barn is uh, is indeed accurate. We actually produce the model and then we prefab the building components, including the timber frame uh, shell. So what you see is is 100% accurate uh, because it's used to actually fabricate the building. Um, and, and, and how are you going to deal with the downslope of the driveway towards the uh, garage? Uh, is it perfect. not as dramatic as some of the positions of this mobile uh, rendering? In, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a severe limitation of the rendering is to try to get sure. some kind of realistic grade. But essentially we need enough of a flat portion of ground that would be uh, level in front of the carriage doors for the carriage doors to swing out um, oh that's so there right would be, it would be four feet of level ground in front and then a gradual taper up and in that four feet there would also need to be adequate drainage to address any water coming down from the the street in the original garage level down to that front area but that yeah, would be actually Pushing, pushing it back helped us a fair amount um, from that perspective and not, not making the grade too sharp. So we get to use the hill to our advantage and the, uh, the extra driveway actually makes the slope. I see. I spoke with Ironwood. They do our landscaping and I asked him what we could realistically get out of the footage we had. Um, and so that's what we incorporated. Great. And also uh, I know like uh, Tom's point that he didn't come and measure all the dimensions of the house and there might, it might not be perfect with, you know, but Matt and I measured the height so that we knew what we were doing with height barn to house was exact. The, um, the material choices on the building itself, uh, again, I'm limited in the rendering materials that we have because it's not really a rendering program, but essentially the the material is intended to be wood with probably a, a Verithane weather, uh, advanced weathering product that would give it a, in fact, a barn appearance. Um, true wood shingles on the roof, cedar shingles on the roof, um, unless it was indicated that you preferred something else. The windows are Marvin wood windows. They're true divided light, all wood windows. The divided lights are insulated, but it, um, uh, they are as close as you can get without going with a single pane. The single panes are offered as well. Um, and that would potentially be something you could use on the first floor, but certainly on the second floor where it's more interior space, uh, the, the insulated panes would be preferable. Uh, the carriage doors would be, um, I've got a couple of different choices for those and we'll provide cut sheets for all of that information um, once we have at least tacit approval on the, the general design. We could use your input on <clears throat> what you feel would be appropriate for the handrail on the rear of the, the uh, structure at the balcony level. And um, the goal would be to veneer the, the foundation with something as close to natural local stone as possible. Mm -hmm. As far as how that rear door interacts with grade, that's another item that needs to be worked out based on actual site dimensions. But uh, my goal had been to have that be some type of landscaping feature, not some, not a wooden deck, but actually a uh, uh, stone terrace uh, or something along those lines. So that was 
a softer interaction with the landscape. Tom, by rear door, you mean the man door on the side or the, or the large windows out the back? Oh, the, the ones out the back. So that's a, that's a sliding door to accommodate the, um, we originally were gonna go with French doors, but with the compression of space, there wouldn't be enough room for swinging those doors inward. And we didn't want to put any type of covering over them and go with an outswing because that would have extended the building even more and looked a little awkward. So the um, man, man door on the side, uh, the, how they will interact with it is ideally a grade would end up transitioning to a slope um, further to the east than the actual door. So halfway between the door and the first window. And it would be as subtle as a slope as possible. So it wasn't necessary to have any type of a, a handrail or anything along those lines. I'm just going just by the graph. I'm just asking the questions based on the renderings. No, by all means, yeah. All right. Anybody else want to weigh in? Okay. I guess I'm curious, are we getting closer or, you know? I mean, for me, again, I, I, you know, I want to see it marked out on the property. Um, it's, it, for, for me, it still seems a little big, uh, but, you know, again, that's why I want to see it kind of staked out and see how it all works. Like you'd want us to actually like put stakes and kind of like spray yeah. paint the footprint or something? Yep. It's no, not even, visit. you. oh, you could just put four, four posts out. You know, I could, I could figure out from there and then height level, I guess. I don't, I don't think know, you can do height. Height level, we can take a guess with, with drawings. Yeah. Uh, but yes, staking a property, actually putting four sticks in the ground with low flags to figure out which sticks you're looking and not your rhododendrons. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Is helpful. It's really helpful. We can do that, and in addition, we can also provide a plan, a site plan with the, the footprint on it, uh, yep. so you have both pieces of information. Yeah. yeah. But to stand on the sidewalk and look at those stakes with the low flags flying, flying, is incredibly helpful to help. Yeah, it's visual. probably going to be helpful for you and all the folks around you. No, nope, I'm. I'm good yeah. No, we're happy to do that. I mean, Matt and I have kind of gone out and like marked it. For ourselves especially with the snow kind of looked at like the size and where it'll end so but yeah yeah i, I just have I'm sorry. I'm sorry go ahead i just have one quick question just to be clear again i know you kind of addressed this in previous meeting but is the building as far north as it can go right now Do, or is there a limitation on why it can't be even just a little bit farther north uh, and thus farther from the house than it is? I think the property line is is about 11 feet, if I, if I read the site plan right. And it was I see. Ago. So I think it's about 11 feet from the property line. I, I mean, it could move closer to the property line. They just erected a fence um, between the property. So, you know, but, but I think, you know, zoning would have to kind of weigh in. Close. I mean, it might be 10 feet. I'm not sure. So. There might be Thank little room you. to move it a foot or so. No, it's not a significant amount. Once we have the uh, plot plan then uh, or, or the, the, the location, uh, then we'll be in a better position to ask about that. But I, I would generally say that the, the idea of repeating what you've done with the house uh, by reducing the scale of this outbuilding um, kind of creates a little bit of a village look and i guess it the question will be is the massing uh, successful or not so uh again if it uh if this drawing is indicative uh we're heading in the right direction uh but at this point i don't think we can telegraph our uh final positions without knowing uh walking the property a bit more and seeing you know where everything lands yeah, I mean, I, you know, it's going to be helpful to see a plot plan. It's going to be helpful to see stakes in the ground. Um, Y'all have tweaked it. You know, it's three inch, three feet hot lower and it's four feet shorter. Um, it's still a really, really, really massive building. Um, really, really, really big new feature on that property. Um, and 13 feet is great. It's, it's a step back, but it's still, it looks from here at least 
very much in relationship and in, in the, sorry, it's 9.30 at night, I'm not articulate, but um, it's still very much um, playing off the house back and forth. Whereas if it was way back, as we talked about, other down into your property where you didn't get a full view, that's a whole different, it's not as tight a visual tie. Um, so it's still really big. It's just a really big two-story building and, you know. It's the same height. I mean, we, we had talked last time about, uh, I think Country Carpenters was brought up. So I went and looked at, so most of those, most of their story and a half barns are 22 feet. Right. I'm sorry, he's kind of coming in and out. I can't, yeah, I can't really so what, what I think he's trying to say is that last time Country Carpenters come, came up and we looked at their story and a half, and this is the same size as their story and a half. I think that the, um, I think the number of bays is more the issue than the height because you're starting to create a look that is more minimal than it was in terms of a form uh, than you started. Uh, and I, I have to say, I have kind of embraced the idea of the gambrel uh, as you have tried to evoke uh, the, the Cove Warehouse, both on the house edition and this. But I think that the number of bays to make this a th even just a three car rather than a four seems to still create a, a massing concern for some, some uh, for all of us, really. Uh, and it, it certainly uh, is, it, it, that, that could still be, I think, a, a sticking point. Um, but I think from the front, um, you know, dead on, uh, when you minimize the, the, the impact of the depth, it's not so bad. Uh, also, when I was asking about the side view, at least it's not as long as the whole house from front to back. Um, but it's hard to say how this will look, um, you know, um, all, w without knowing the full dimensions of the existing building. So thank you for everything. And like I said, the drawing is, is helpful. Um, and also the distance of this building from the other to the north of you is relatively substantial. Is that not correct? They have a big yeah. side yard. So we're yeah, between our there. neighbors. There's a there's a lot of space. Yeah. So here, I have a proposal. Uh, years ago, we used to do site visits. And I think this is an example where this yeah. would be really useful for yes. the commissioners to actually come out to the site, stand on a corner of the building, take a look. I mean, obviously, the homeowners have a very good idea of what's what. Zoom makes this really, really hard. It's really hard to do hand waving over Zoom. Uh, meeting outside is, I think, probably safe for most of us. And the weather's getting better. We can meet and stand outside and hopefully get the two sides to understand the issues that we all have. Yeah, I think that would be great. Does that mean we make a date that we all get together to do that? Or you guys come individually on? We'd make a date. We'd make a yeah, date. Yeah, I, I think that would be really wise and helpful. Yeah. Thank, thank you for these images. Okay. If you could bring it south just a little bit, I'd like to screenshot the view from the front. Thanks. And then the view from the back. Yeah, I can oh, also great. email this. This is a uh, this is a, a little bit of large file, but I can email this to you. you can, can That's great. It. Yeah, why don't you send it over to Kim? We can have. Thank you. And you may want to you may want to mention to them that in that particular file there are the other al alternative views showing the similarity and massing of the other two because it will be available in there. Yeah, sure. Um, I can show you kind of what he's talking about. So um, this is the proposed barn. You can turn that off. This is a basically this is a, a regular gabled version of that. Oh, I see. And um, so, so what that represents is it's the same roof pitch as the upper pitch of the gable on the right. the gambrel. It's the same height. 
uh, and it offers the same ceiling height, which is pretty minimal on the interior uh, at the eave line, certainly. The windows are set lower, about eye level. Um, uh, but it's not embellished, but it just starts to show that that actually is a larger massing than and the it, Jambrel. It isn't broken up as much. Right. And so. the next one is, um, this was more in keeping with some of the images you showed of the, the smaller barns, but in order to get any living space or available space on the second floor, we need a, a modest knee wall and a little bit greater depth to get the vehicles in. And so that becomes a very large massing as well. Um, you know, if the second floor is to have any meaningful space, um, the Gambrel seems to be the most appealing option. And the size that we have now is about as small as we can go and still get two vehicles in lengthwise on one bay. The other bay <clears throat> houses the stairs, and that's one of the main issues with some of these other massing arrangements is trying to figure out how to get a set of stairs to the second floor that doesn't impede, um, you know, both bays. Is what we're looking at here, um, is, is what we're looking at here still three cars? Though, I mean, the one that we looked at just before it went back to the Gambro? That's a hard, that's a hard yeah. question. It depends on the cars. Um, okay. Taking this down by about four feet, I think, from what we originally proposed. So it's, it's a significant. Oh. The Mini Cooper is a nice car. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, that might work. <laughs> I know, I know we've had so many conversations about all of this. I just keep coming back to the fact, the fact that you all have a huge piece of property and you're already doing an addition on the back. So have you thought about, I mean, I'm sure you have, you've thought about everything, but not doing a two-story barn. I mean, do a one-story or a smaller garage and then get that living space that you're looking for in the second floor somewhere else. I mean, you've got lots of options um, for that living space. It just seems like, you know, you're not, you're not hemmed in in terms of your property is all I'm saying, but. I, I mean, guess I, I think, you know, for us with the addition, we wanted to be very cautious with how we attach and connect to the house and the roof line and support structures there. And um, we've looked at a lot of plans on that and, and and worked with another a number of architects and just couldn't find a way to get that space that I didn't think does more harm to the actual house. You know, I, I know that we differ. Like, I, I think the barn is beautiful and sort of fits the property and you guys have concerns, so we differ there. But to me, it's like, I mean, you could always tear off the addition and restructure it, but like, this does no change to the main house. And any addition we do, is altering the main house. And so we wanted to be very careful with that footprint. Yeah, I mean, I hear what yeah, you're saying. No, I, I mean, just... you get your point, but no, I think, I think Commissioner Mead makes a really interesting point. You know, so it, it, this is front and center of the property. Whereas if you work to the back of the land, it's, a, you know, it's a lot less impressionable. On, on the streetscape so yeah and again our limitation with that is eventually hitting that line we can't build behind but also working um our best to try not to block anyone's views and we had thought we had considered years ago the other side of the property which you guys brought up so matt and i revisited that and no matter how you space it we either block someone across the street's whole view which i rather not do to any i mean we like our neighbors <laughs> you know we want to continue to like them and and either to not block anyone's view it's almost the same distance but on the other side and then if we push it even further, it becomes just not a practical garage. We'll have to walk like 200 feet every well, time. Well, but not a garage. I mean, like build us, I was just, what I was thinking is just this, this site, sorry. I'm just trying to put my hand in front of the other thing. Um, you know, use the footprint that you've got for your garage, but not do a two-story structure. Get the living space somewhere else. Is what like I was just thinking. Like an building through. potentially? You've got a big property. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm just, I'm, you know, it's, it's quarter 10. I'm just knocking ideas around, but no, it's, no. it's the height that we, that's. When that's the best ideas it. come up. 
yeah, yeah it's maybe, the height maybe. that's making the massing such a problem it's that it's so so big it's a, it's a two and a half story two story building so that's i was just right yeah. in the, in, the, in the front of your house uh, the original part of the house is obviously it's petite it's it's very yeah so anyway we uh we'll schedule a site we visit. have another we have not I, I, I hate to do this but we do have one oh, more no. tonight. I get it. I mean, I don't, I think I hear what you're saying. I don't know if Matt has any other questions or Tom. No, I think I'm all set. We're going to right. Thank you very much. We'll talk with Kim about setting up a site visit and uh, hopefully you guys can get that staked out for us. Yeah, we can do that this weekend. Beautiful. All right. And the uh, file over as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thanks guys. All right. Kim. I'm here. We have one more, <laughs> don't we? We do. All right. Come on. <laughs> it's me. It's me. <laughs> Miss Blake, thank you for being so patient. No problem. No problem. Um, so I'm. I was suggested to do this meeting tonight um, to discuss the slate roof. I put it on the application since we're the new owners. Um, and I don't really know what is going on with all of that because I, I don't know if I can apply for it or I can't apply for it. Um, so I guess I'm looking for some clarification on that part of it. And then um, what my options are because of the situation at hand, there's problems. Obviously most roofs have problems, but we have tenants that live there. Um, and there, the house has just been basically a disaster from the minute we purchased it. Um, so time is against us. The pandemic has caused or has caused materials to be delayed. So that's against us. And it's not like it's a accessory, it's a roof. So we got to work something out somehow if possible. So I'm kind of just looking for some solution. <laughs> okay. Um, it is my understanding that in the previous application, uh, this uh, there was there was an ask for the roof to be changed, and it was denied. So I think we might have to uh, stay. You know, for lack of better anything else, I think we might have to stay with that. I think we're we're held to that. So I don't oh. know if we can put that on an application. Is a denial always the denial for years and years and years to come, or is there a time frame with the denial? How does that work? That's a good question. But my reading of it is that a denial will just like a an approval mm -hmm. is good for one year. Okay. After, so if it's a flat denial, it's been denied and we don't need to hear another identical application for one year. Then you can come in and be told no again. Um, well, I, I have to say, Vasek, I think we probably ought to research that because, yeah. you know, I, I, I mean, you might be right. It makes logical sense. I just don't know that. I mean, I know that in our, in our, you know, the legislation and our handbook, et cetera, it talks about one year approval, it, the, the approval is good for a year, but we may, may need to research how long it lasts. It's certainly not going to be any. I, I would say this, uh, Larissa, you know, the, I, I was a person who voted um, without, uh, in the minority, uh, and, and, and voted to um, allow the change. But, you know, having been through that vote once already, and I believe we've already debated it about this house previously, uh, and given that uh, slate roofs have been revered in their in the previous votes that we have, um, I would have a hard time voting anything other than to support the original will of the majority on on this, especially because it's a, a, such a well settled uh, decision for both this house and in the district. So, as much as I might individually feel uh, and, uh, 
an, an affinity for your um, decision making aesthetically. Uh, oh, no, I'm not, not opposed to the slate. I don't want that to be misunderstood. I'm not opposed oh. to. I I prefer to leave the slate. The problem is that there's we've had so many slate professionals come out to the property, and there's so many things going on with the roof that there's actually tin underneath. It's an original tin roof. So we have an original tin roof. We have Yankee gutters that were ripped off, filled with tar, and then we have slate on top of it. So we have a multitude of problems that I'm just trying to find some sort of solution for. The man that I met with, Mayan Slate Company, they're renowned. They came out and they said that they could patch, like do a couple repairs. They cannot promise it's gonna match the original slate that's on there. Even if we tried, they said it is, it's because of the, the composition of the material and the weathered look of all the slate that's been there for how long, it's 65 tiles just to repair. And that has nothing to do with the structural component. That's just an aesthetic, just to repair that mm -hmm. stuff. They said that it, they can't promise. So it's gonna look like random. So there was that one. And then we said, well, the problem is obviously the structural behind underneath it. And they said, well, the only, the only way to do it is to take it off completely. And then if you have to put slate back, it's still not going to match the existing because you can't slate, you can't do that. Because I understand that. But I mean, if, if what you're saying is that there are things you know about the roof that you didn't know before that we needed to know, that would be a little bit different than uh, than how this opened. Um, uh, but I, 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 I have to say, Doug, I think that we had, as you said, we had massive conversations, lengthy conversations, tabling, et cetera. Um, and what we agreed and decided the majority vote was that the, the look of a slate roof, the fact of a slate roof was significant to to, to, to maintain for the district. And so regardless of what structural issues now have been uncovered, that doesn't change the, 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 the commitment of the commission to Slate Roos and to what that said about that house, part, what part of the story about that house it is. So we all stood there. So, so I, don't, I don't think that we can, we can let sort of structural information change that decision. I, I think that you're right, Claire, when it comes to the vote, but I don't know that the way that we normally operate, if there is some kind of substantially new information that wasn't available to us at the time of the original hearing, that, that, um, that we can't say that there's an application to be made. I mean, today's meeting is to well, talk about whether or not that application can be made. But I think that, I still think that application would fail, but I think that saying that the house had a tin roof uh, and if that could be shown to have any the, kind of- on the documents from the Historical Society. They, I asked Amy to, sub, to give me any information she had on the roof. And it does state there that there's 10. Okay. I mean, that might have been the lining for a slate roof, but I'm not an expert in that, so I wouldn't know. But so I think if you... I, I just, I think it's a very, very worrisome precedent, a very worrisome precedent to allow a new homeowner to come in and ask us to reverse a, a decision within we, months. Yeah, we'd have to... No, no, I get that. I totally, and I'm not trying to, to do any of that. What I'm asking is somehow it has to get done. Something has to get done with the roof. Oh, we can't leave it as it is because it's- uh, 65 tiles get replaced or reset and the roof stops leaking, right? No, that's just for the tiles that are missing. So right. there's no it, bridge it vent. Leaking there? I'm sorry? And then it stops leaking? No. Okay. So there's there's Yankee gutters that were ripped off. So there's a hole in the roof. Okay. Um, I can't remember which side. I think it's on the left hand side in that corner. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, there's uh, the support of the roof is compromised because of the weight of the tile and the deterioration. And I know you don't do anything with structural, but 
I don't want to condemn the house either. I want to fix it. Every owner that's owned this house before us has just let it go. And I'm not one of those people, as you can tell, everything that we do do, we put our heart and souls into everything. Um, and we, I mean, I even had a master carpenter remake every single one of those posts on that, uh, on that porch um, with wood because I am so passionate about this project particularly, but now I'm between a, a rock and a hard place because I have this roof and I need to do something with it. Well, are you indicating that you'd be, that you would uh, be willing to put a new slate roof on that? house um i'm not indicating that because it's i believe it's upwards of eighty thousand um, dollars just to repair those 65 slate tiles was twenty two thousand um so and that's just to boo that's just to do patchwork that has nothing to do with any of the structural that's not ripping anything off that's just patching and putting in the ridge vent that's blown off with the wind so well, I, I can say that in terms of your concern, your statement, I mean, that's not yeah. concern is the right word. In terms of you saying that um, it's not going to match and it's going to look, that happens. Um, you, can't, you can't match materials over time. And so that, I, I don't think that that's something that the commission would have a problem with. Um, so slate replaced the, for max for match. So that's not that's not an issue for us. What happens with the integrity of the roof? Because I don't want to just put lipstick on it. I want to actually right. fix it. That's sort of between you and your 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 like how to how to make it structurally work. You know, and if you need to change it, then you have to come in for an application to change the pitch or the extension or any of all that. Of course. But that we can't give you an answer for how to fix that structurally. So the application that I had submitted was to completely take off the roof um, based off of everything that had been presented to us. We thought that that was the best approach is to start fresh. And because we don't want to just keep doing this, like there's Previous owners just put tar paper. We're not looking to do stuff like that. We want, I mean, it's a very visible home and um, we want it to be representative of who we are as people and also the community that we, you know, invest all of our time and energy with. Um, so I, I don't want to fix it just to say, okay, I fixed it. There's 65 tiles, boom, it's done. And it's okay if it doesn't match. I'm talking about like the whole thing there has to be some sort of a solution with that um obviously there will be significant hardship and if i have to completely take off the whole thing and put um slate back on it because uh, that's 80 to a hundred thousand uh, dollars that's quoted from multiple slate companies um i have a family friend that owns hilltop in granville new york um, which is a very renowned slate uh, manufacturer and producer. They have their own quarry there. And I even spoke with him and he suggested that I come and talk to you guys about the situation because it, it's, it's not something that is um, practical. It's, it's very, it, it, this is a significant difficulty and hardship for, for the, the building itself, for us as owners. And I'm just looking to have some sort of a solution for it. And at the end of the day, you guys are the deciding factor. So I, I don't know. I'm looking for something. <laughs> well, I should correct a statement I made earlier, which is I, um, I abstained in my original vote uh, or the last vote on that property. Um, but um, like I said, um, I think that um, there's more I, I'm glad that you came in and that we have a chance to uh, talk uh, today about this. Um, and I think what you may, may need to do is you may need to review exactly what applications have been made before and, and think about exactly what it is you want to do. Uh, uh, and if there is uh, a distinction uh, that you can draw um, you know, you may get somewhere uh, on the application side, but I think that what Claire said about the embrace of um, a slate roof uh, is, is a really high hurdle here. Um, and I guess par part of what 
you've indica indicated uh, is that to redo slate with slate is not your request. What is the request that you're planning to ask for? So <clears throat> what I uh, put in the application was that there was a slate like what most of the slate companies that I spoke to, they said that there's a product by certain teed. It is identical in, in terms of the shape of the slate. It's like that same hexagon shape. And um, it's uh, Belmont um, is one type. And then there's something called carriage. And the carriage looks just like the slate that's up there. I'm so sorry, but for somebody who has stood here or sat here moments ago and said how much you cared about the integrity of it, have you actually looked at these products? Well, yes. I think what I think what Vas is getting at yeah, is no that words. they're asphalt uh, shingles primarily in a different shape. So they there are a number of products that replicate uh, or try to replicate the look of yes, uh, asphalt shingles, but I not sure that these certainty ones are necessarily that. And I think what, uh, if I may be so uh, presumptuous, I think what Vasek's saying is that you'd have to be really sure that uh, what you're proposing replicates the look of slate. And uh, I'm not sure the certainties do. Um, I'm going point. up about it. I wasn't, this is, was, this is the whole point of this meeting is right. I, th this is very uncharted territory for me. And ideally I would love to keep the slate, but I know for a fact that I can't justify the, uh, I don't want to say this in the wrong way, but the, the hardship that we would endure if we had to rip the entire roof off and re-put the slate. I don't know of anyone else in this town that has had to do that. Well, you've already answered the question that that isn't what you want to do. That's why I was kind of directing you towards what is the fallback. And so, as I said, you mentioned you mentioned one of the products, and it may be that that product is the best at replicating slate. But I think that given your eye, I would start by examining all of the replicating products and make sure that in your own mind, you're sure that what you're coming to us with is something that really meets that standard that you're mentioning, that you want to embrace. So again, I think that even if all that happens, we have all of the issues of the previous decisions and the uh, standard in the district for notice when it comes to the last owner, when it comes to the future owners, all those issues are there, but I don't even think that you're in the batter's box on this until you get a little bit farther along in your uh, uh, research of replicating products. Uh, you might have started with a certainty, and I could be wrong. The certainty could be something that's more than just asphalt shingles cut in the shape of, uh, of, of slate, but um, there are are a lot of products out there. I know that when the Silas Robbins house was redone, uh, they explored some and they ex they brought some of those to us. So, um, is it possible though to even that? I guess the reason why I'm here tonight is is to find out if that's even an option for me. When I had emailed Kim, it was this is what I was presenting. And she said, well, you have to come to the meeting tonight or you should rather see, so she suggested it because she didn't even know, she basically said that I couldn't apply for the roof. So is, what is the well, time? I think, I, think that, I think that what Kim was doing was trying to give an opportunity for us to air this informally. Yep. So I don't think that we are trying to bind either her or you to whatever might've been said before. But based on, based on tonight, we've learned a little bit more and that little bit more may also include uh, 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 the fact that we'd have to do some research into whatever has been applied for before. Okay, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, Doug. I think, Go ahead, Claire. I think the question is we had an application on November 10, which is not very long ago, and we denied having the slate removed. We, we, we voted that the slate roof needed to stay. 
And so I don't understand how the next homeowner can come in, can even be, can even come in with an application to remove. I think it all depends on what the last person asked for. They, I think Matt had asked for GAF architectural shingles, which is what's on the house currently. Um, but I don't like those. So my suggestion or my, what I wanna do is I wanna unify all the roofs. So I'm looking for something that I can take, I wanna take all the roofs off and put one con, like one type of roofing, whether it be, you know, I, I just want to do something. I, if if I, I would love to do a metal roof, but I, I feel like that's going to get shut down too, even though, you know, tin was on the roof prior to. Um, I, we, I think, I think we, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I think we need to go back and see what uh, what the parameters of our, our ruling okay. were, you know, because we need to know, you know, are we opening ourselves up to exposure if, yeah. You know, so let's let's do that. Um, Let us do that first, and, and we can we'll have get back to you, and then we can we can move forward. Okay, I think that sounds wonderful. Because it might not even be an option to hear it at this point. Okay. So. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I'd like just to add too, and, and I appreciate the work that the applicant has done on the other properties in town, but I, I think even in, by all mission here. It, the extent of what this approval, what's on our screens now too, kind of have already over exceeded what we were, did approve. I, I unfortunately was at two of the meetings, not this one. I was not present for this one, unfortunately. I apologize, but I, I think we already took some liberties to do far more than what this application here. Uh, and, and I, you know, we just kept going um, on it as you found stuff to repair. So. Uh, you know, I think it needs to be researched. Uh, yeah. What exactly? Because you know, it is unfair to hold, in one extent, a, a prior owner, whether it's six months later, six days later, when you have a new owner come in. Um, but again, that that's a decision that's going to have to be made. I, I guess, Larissa, we just don't know yet because this hasn't really come up. I know, and I'm time. learning of it all. To I mean, I just learned of that yeah. today. So. But it is a, you can understand as well. well I think you, you would agree you that did. it's a material difference. It was it was clearly uh, not you know, to you allow knew that there the was slate rules. Application, rule. Larissa, and it was denied. Yeah. So it's and it's taped oh, in the middle. No, I just didn't know that you can't as because I was I was told I had to reapply for a modification to that application. That was um, so. Then I re that I applied for that for a modification to the application that Matt had presented mm -hmm. and um and well, then but, I but just just out of curiosity I mean since on November 10 we denied it why why would we now in March approve it because there's so much more information well the information is that it's more expensive right no that's that is just a the icing on the cake, if you will. <laughs> but I mean, it is, it's that you have to take the whole roof off and there's a lot more structural work that needs to be done. That's, that's the new information. Also, there's three different types of roofing on the house and I really want to make it one roof. I don't want it to have three, it's tabbed roof, which is awful. It's got brown architectural on the, on the back and then the slate with the missing ridge vent and it's just falling, it's falling apart and I just want to fix it. And I don't, like I said, I don't have a problem with the slate. I can do a repair, but the repair is going to be basically lipstick on a pig. It's not going to be the right way. And I want to do it the right way. All right. Well, again, I don't know. We, we need to do some research and we need to get back to you on whether we can even okay. hear it. So um let's let's start there and then we'll fig we'll figure it out from there okay sounds perfect thank you so much for your time thank you thanks all righty um any other business kim no not for today okay. any correspondence none i would ask for a motion to adjourn so, so moved Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thanks for your time tonight. Thanks, everybody, for weighing in. And uh, thanks for putting up with me for my first uh, 
You did it. good. You did very well, Mark. Thank you. Good job. Thank you nice. for encouragement. You guys are the best. <laughs> All right. Have a great week. Thank Joke. you, everyone.